an overcast October day in Logan, Utah. Merlin Olsen Field, the site, Romney Stadium. It's homecoming as the WAC leaders come calling. Hawaii visits Utah State. Hi, everybody. Alongside Jay Taylor, I'm Trey Bender. Glad you're with us. Hawaii football is alive and well. They're atop the national charts in terms of passing, coming off a win over a ranked team in Nevada. And their quarterback, Jay, Bryant Moniz, they feel could be the best ever at the school. And that's saying something. That definitely is saying something. When you're talking about this junior quarterback, he was a walk-on. He won the hearts of the coaches. But what gets me is this. When you look at what this guy's done, he leads the nation in passion, 2,500 yards plus. But he protects the ball, 65% completely percentage and 21 touchdowns to four interceptions that gets you wins every time on the other side of things the Aggies counting on DeAndre Burrell dual threat quarterback 15th in the nation in career total yardage coach McMackin said this guy was a quarterback of the whack last year and coach Anderson says this guy can do that again this year but the offensive skill positions around him have to step up and make plays and help him out and the offensive coaching staff has to do their part in that as well the Aggies looking for another signature win here in Logan. Warriors are looking for their fifth straight win. The traditional haka dance, a big part of the Hawaiian culture. Can they get another road victory? Hawaii and Utah State coming up. Do you want to own a brand new HP, Dell, or other name brand computer and improve your credit at the same time? If so, Tronix Country says you're approved, guaranteed. I wanted a new computer, but I couldn't get financed. Then I called Tronix Country. They approved me, delivered my new computer, and are reporting on my credit. If you have an active checking account and can afford low, flexible payments, you're already approved, guaranteed, for this special offer. There's no credit check, so you won't be turned down. Tronix Country approved me quickly. I got instant approval, and it was easy. Their flexible payment plans made it easy on my budget, and my kids are getting ahead in school. I started my own business, and now I'm my own boss. Call now, and with your paid order, we'll add a free color printer, free MP3 music player, and free LCD TV. You heard right. Free printer, free MP3 player, and free LCD TV. Call now and tell us where you want your brand new computer and free gift shipped today. I'm glad I called. Oh, oh. Awesome again. Oh my god, this is really good. That's why your parties are the best. You should do this for a living. He's right. You've always been like the best cook. Ever thought of going to Le Cordon Bleu? Seriously, you should. Yeah, you could train with all those experienced chef instructors. Yeah. yeah. You're an artist. Go work with other artists. You should call Le Cordon Bleu today. Yeah, call right now. Yeah. Call them. Seriously. Do it. You know you want to. If you call, you get a complimentary career guide. Call Le Cordon Bleu campus at 1-800-719-7065. one 800 719 Today, a big day in Aggie land. Family on hand for the dedication of the Merlin Olsen statue, South Plaza Romney Stadium. All-American at Utah State, greatest Aggie ever, passed away in March after a 15-year Hall of Fame career with the Los Angeles Rams. Aggie fans proud everywhere, and they're excited for football. Kickoff coming up in Logan. We're expecting quite a matchup today as the Gladiators take the field. The quarterback breaks left to the counter while his receivers look for a wide open table. He scans his options, nine tasty flavors. Every call from the Wingstop playbook looks incredible. Oh, that was a close call. He spots his teammates and goes for the end zone. Touchdown! Awkward. A play like that has me reconsidering retirement. Wingstop, the official wings of me, Troy Aikman. Brandon Yip and the rest of your Avalanche get ready to square off against Dustin Brown and the LA Kings. Avs, Kings, puck drop, Saturday, 6.30, only on Altitude. Thousands of cars, trucks, and RVs are being repossessed by banks every day. Banks and auto lenders take these vehicles to private auto auctions, which are not open to the public. These vehicles are auctioned off so fast, they often don't even get washed. Cars are being auctioned off for as little as $100. If you're looking for a great deal on a repossessed car, truck, or RV not available to the public, check out repocity.net. We can find repossessed vehicles for you before they go to sale and purchase them at greatly reduced prices. 
This is an ever-changing market. Selection of vehicles varies daily. So call us now at 1-877-990-REPO or go to reposity.net for a great deal on the car, truck, or RV of your dreams. It's simple. Just call 1-877-990-REPO or go to reposity.net. Tell us what you're looking for, what you want to bid, and we will find it for you. Repo City, your key to finding deals on repossessed wheels. On the Altitude Pro Football Summit. Hey, Scott, he's here for the Pro Football Summit. We get into what happened in that Jets game with the Broncos, what's going on next week with the Raiders, and all around the NFL, the Pro Football Summit. Game is brought to you by the Hawaiian Airlines Diamond Head Classic, December 22nd, 23rd, and 25th in Honolulu. And by the Sheridan Hawaii Bowl, where the CUSA and WAC meet on December 24th. Fall day here in northern Utah, and these fans are geared up for a big homecoming matchup. Their last outing here, a win over BYU. Now the WAC leaders are here. The Hawaii Warriors making the 3,000 mile trip from the islands to northern Utah. Glad you're with us. Utah State deferring to the second half. They'll play defense first, and they'll kick it off to Hawaii. So a chance to see this high powered Hawaii offense here from the get go, Jay. I always love when you're at home and it's homecoming and the energy level. Let your defense go out there first. Try to set a tone. You know what kind of offense Hawaii has. See if you can force a three and out, stop them from scoring on their first drive. Get that momentum and let your offense come out and do something. Nick Diaz, the freshman, has it teed up. He's their kickoff specialist. Hawaii losing the opening toss for the first time since their opener. They'll get the football first, and we are underway from Logan. Dustin Blunt, three yards deep in his end zone. He'll come out of there with it. Blunt to the 25. Breaks one tackle and then goes down at the 30-yard line. Good open field tackle made by Chris Harris on special teams. This Hawaii team led by Bryant Moniz, who was their sixth quarterback last year, came in in relief of an injured Greg Alexander and started lighting teams up starting eight games a year ago. This year, he's taken the numbers to an unbelievable level. You see there, only four interceptions, leads the nation 362 yards per game, getting better and better, a student of the game, and he's only a junior at the helm of this Hawaii Warriors program. We'll start the first series from the 29-yard line. We'll see a lot of four receivers and the single back look in this run and shoot. Out of the backfield, catch by Alex Green. Green across the first down strike and has a first down out to the 46-yard line. They pick up 17 yards and a little swing pass, his 16th catch of the year. It's basically a nice little swing pass. Got the defense out of position. Wagner, you won't see that too many times where he's in a bad spot. But Eric Alex Green using the speed, getting outside. And he has good, good size at 230 pounds, rumbles upfield, gets a nice first down play. That's essentially a long handoff. They love that play, and they love Green's versatility. He is a big back as well at 6'2 and 230 pounds. First down at the 47 now for Hawaii, just underway from Romney Stadium at Utah State. Moniz going far sideline. Salas, his main target, has it. And that's a first down grab to the Aggies' 26-yard line. You're looking at arguably the best receiver in college football, 62nd catch already this year. Salas has great hands, great size, but you're going to see Moniz. This was a setup on the right side. The inside receiver did a stop route, pulled the corner up. Corner got confused, had to recover on that to, just to get back into position to try to make that play. 28-yard reception by the All-America candidate, the Blitnikoff Award candidate. First down now at the Aggies' 25-yard line. Moniz with Green right behind him. Two receivers to each side this time. Has time. Goes for the end zone. And it is intercepted. Taken away by Roderick Coleman, the free safety. And the Aggies make an early stand on defense. Roderick Coleman made a great jump on that. I should say got a good jump on that ball. Saw exactly where Moniz wanted to go with it. You're going to see him kind of sitting there in the middle. He's reading his eyes, he sees him taking left, he comes back right, gets a good jump on that ball, 
All you free safeties, that's how you have to play the middle of the field right there. Watch that quarterback and let him take you to where the ball is. Good stop because this offense definitely was moving down the field to get themselves a score. The third pick of the year for the senior from Litchfield Park, Arizona. Coach Anderson loves the way his secondary is playing this year. They have been active back there, and that's a big play on the initial series. DeAndre Burrell at the helm. Hand it off on the end around play, and it goes for short yardage as they get Joey DiMartino a look, the sophomore from San Diego, who we saw at Louisiana Tech a few weeks back. This kind of thing you want to get going offensively here. This team struggled two weeks ago running the ball. They want to establish the run to help Burrell with the pass. And they would show that run from multiple formations. And they'd like to see Burrell make it the plays without pressing as they run the football straight ahead. And tough sledding up the middle, a couple yards maybe up to the 25 yard line. And that's it for Durvin Spate, the senior from Irving, Texas. Spate and Burrell, the two seniors leading the offense for the Aggies. Here's a look at the Aggies. They're counting on Dontel Watkins. He's their leading receiver, at least three catches every game at that wide receiver position. Up front, the leader is Napaloo, the right guard, 300-pounder from Linwood, California, three-year starter. Third and five now for Burrell. Through the hands of his intended receiver, and they'll have to punt it away, and that was right in the sights of Travis Reynolds, and looked like he didn't see the football in time. They took that offensive set with no back, spread that defense out to give Burrell a nice, good look to try to find an open receiver. He did in Travis Reynolds. Reynolds has to do a good job, like we said, in the open. This, the, the special guys on the outside have to make plays to help out. Peter Caldwell, who has had an injury riddle campaign, ankle injury, gets off a booming kick inside the 10, and it's down at the nine yard line. I think is where they're going to spot it there. Caldwell with maybe a career long right there. He had a 62 yarder last year, and that one pins the Warriors back at the nine. That is a boom of all booms. That ball was nice, high, tight spiral. Pins the te opposing team back inside the 10 yard line. You can't ask for anything more out of your punter in that kind of situation. Jay, that is a career long 66 yards on the punt for the senior from Kaysville, Utah. What a weapon to have back there. They are an extension of the defense. Whenever you have great punting special teams but especially great punting that helps your defense out because you can pin people back so both defenses coming up with stops but Moniz and company back on the field for their second possession just underway from Logan Do you want to own a brand new HP, Dell, or other name brand computer and improve your credit at the same time? If so, Tronix Country says you're approved, guaranteed. I wanted a new computer, but I couldn't get financed. Then I called Tronix Country. They approved me, delivered my new computer, and are reporting on my credit. If you have an active checking account and can afford low, flexible payments, you're already approved, guaranteed, for this special offer. There's no credit check, so you won't be turned down. Tronix Country approved me quickly. I got instant approval, and it was easy. Their flexible payment plans made it easy on my budget, and my kids are getting ahead in school. I started my own business, and now I'm my own boss. Call now, and with your paid order, we'll add a free color printer, free MP3 music player, and free LCD TV. You heard right. Free printer, free MP3 player, and free LCD TV. Call now and tell us where you want your brand new computer and free gift shipped today. I'm glad I called. Lodo's Bar & Grill have the best rooftop patios in Colorado. All the major sports packages broadcasting in high def. Not a bad seat in the house. Lodo's serves delicious American food, burgers, pasta, seafood, pizza, steaks, sandwiches, and more. Join us for happy hour. Food and drink specials every day of the week. Three locations, downtown Denver across from Coors Field, Highlands Ranch off C-470 in Quebec, and Westminster Federal Boulevard at 104th. For more information, visit lodosbarandgrill.com. I believe a good solid education is one of the most important things to pass along to our kids. And kids are the top priority at the Tim Tebow Foundation. So that's why I teamed up with Groove Auto's Drive for Education program to give Colorado kids what they deserve, a brighter future.
To learn more, visit our websites or a Groove dealership near you. Together, we can all help Colorado's kids succeed in the game of life. He's failed to score on their opening possessions. Homecoming here at Utah State. Hawaii getting their second look offensively here. They'll start the series from the nine-yard line after a career-long 66-yard punt. Off the foot of Caldwell, Moniz will go to work. Three receivers left for the junior. He looks to that side of the field in the hands of Kalo Polaris. Makes one man miss, and then he's gang tackled at the 13-yard line. So good yards after catch. All of these Hawaii receivers, including Polaris. Let's look, take a look at this offense. Number one in the nation, passing offense. And their go-to guy is Salas, who averages almost nine catches per game. That's fourth best in the nation. Up front, Austin Hansen, returning starter. He was their right tackle last year on the left side this year. And they are big up front. Leituli goes 6'4", 325 pounds on the other side. And it's a veteran unit despite having only one returning starter. They're all juniors and seniors up front. Five-yard catch by Polaris. Second and five at the 14 for the Warriors. Moniz looking right. Now in some trouble. Now he's going to run. A flag is down, and he's thrown down behind the line of scrimmage by Walter McClinton, the strong safety. You're looking right here. He drops back. Nothing's there. Dances forward. He's very good about sitting in the pocket, not looking to run first, looking to throw. But again, Walter McClinton done a good job of coming up there, sealing that edge, allowing him not to get outside and get that sack for him. Offside, off. defense, number 18. Five-yard penalty, first down. Claire Gaussman, our uh, lead referee here. Richard Stewart, the corner offside. You don't see that often on the defensive side. Every receiver always looks to his right to point to the referee and say, am I on? The DBs must do the same. They'll answer the question. You just got to look to your left and say, hey, am I, am I good? The referee will let you know. You can't have a play like that after you just had a nice stop. Now, Levi Koskin, uh, the injured Aggie, they can ill afford to lose him, their junior, and he leads the team in sacks and tackles for loss, but he's up on his own power and walking off the field here. First down for Hawaii at their 19-yard line. This is a defense that wants to control the big plays, Jay. They want to get Hawaii off track. They understand. Coach Anderson made this very clear. He says Hawaii will get their yards. The thing we have to do as a defensive unit is find a way to get them off the field. And I'd also like to make Moniz first read cloudy. Make him have to check off and look for that second option on offense. They'll hand it off. In the run game, it's Cheesy Demude. No, it's uh, Green instead. They'll rotate them both, 25 and 26, but Green with a big gain, and that's the first down up to the 38-yard line. You can see the size of Green at 235 pounds, and he runs hard. He definitely is running hard. Nice big gap. He gets up in there, does a good job. When you're talking 230 and 6'2", he has a lot of speed. And this is a little bit of the issue Utah State defense had two weeks ago against La Tech. They gave him a lot of rushing yards which puts a lot of pressure on that defense. Look at the numbers. Uh, first in the nation uh, and amongst the 120 teams, 117th rushing, but they can gas you from time to time if you're not careful. Green had 68 on the ground and their big win against Nevada last week. Here's a delay into the hands of Green. He has some room across the 45 and close to a first down taken down at the 47-yard line. Jason Fanica, the end on the play. What you're seeing right now is this opening the gas because you have to respect the arm of Brian Muniz. These offensive linemen is basically a draw play. And you're looking at Alex Green with great vision, side to side vision. This senior really knows how to get positive yards. And he checks out now as you look at the rushing yardage here in the early stages. Cheesy Demude is now in, a 200 pounder out of Hayward, California. Second down and two. Hawaii ran for a bunch of yards last year on the islands against the Aggies. Moniz to throw it, deep ball. He wants Bradley and can't come up with it at the Aggies 22 yard line. Good coverage down there. Cameron Sanders, the cornerback. Bradley was trying to get upfield position. You're gonna see Brian Moniz right here does a great job. Throws a very nice deep ball. Puts that ball up there. Ahead of the receiver, the DB did an excellent job though of pulling that upfield arm. You're gonna see right here, as he goes to reach, he pulls that arm down, doesn't allow him to 
put his arms together to make that catch. It's a young guy, redshirt freshman Sanders. Uh, McMacken, I think, wanted the defensive pass interference call. Would not get the call right there. Third and two now for Hawaii. Moniz over the middle. Catch made by Salas in a first down, brought down by Marsh at the Aggies 41. You can see why they're so excited about him at the next level. This guy is all about possession across the middle of the field. It was a double dig, dig route by the two slot guys, and Salas was the deeper route. Pilar's was the shorter route. The defense jumped the shorter route. They went to Pilar's the deeper route, 6-2. 210 pound guy that can catch balls across the middle all day long. Look at that, a number one amongst active players. Unbelievable numbers, and that's a catch in 35 straight games. Fourth longest streak in the nation in that category. First down now at the Utah State 41. They'll hand it off. It's Demude, and he has some room to the left side and has a first down as he tumbles inside well, the 30 yard good. line. Bowden on the tackle, but this really makes Hawaii dangerous when they can get this kind of yardage on the ground. Defensive coordinator Bill Bush of Utah State is getting very frustrated. I can tell right now they're losing contain right there. Contain was lost, which allowed the running back to get outside. One thing you have to remember, you want to keep contain against a spread offense because if he gets outside because the DBs are running the receivers, he will be running 5, 10, 15 yards before he gets touched. 12-yard pickup. Demude maybe a little bit shaken up. Alex Green back in at the running back position. Fresh set of downs now at the Aggies 29. All kinds of time for Moniz. Wide open, Salas, he has it. And he's bumped out of bounds inside the five. But we have two penalty flags back closer to the line of scrimmage. It may be a pick route by the offense. You're going to see Salas was the inside slot receiver. And the outside receiver, Royce Pollard, came in. Pass interference. Offense number 81. 15 yards, first down. And that's exactly what happened because Rice Pollard came in, picked the DB, which freed Salas to go out and up the sideline. And that's why he was so wide open. So wipe out a big catch by Salas. Would have been a first and goal. They'll back him up to the 44-yard line now. You can see right here, Moniz is he's waiting. He's waiting for him to get open. And as you can see right there, that's why he's so wide open. The DB right there, Chris Randall's the one that had him, but he got picked off and couldn't get back outside. First and 25. We'll see if the Aggies can take advantage now. Defensively, they got a pick on the first Hawaii series. First and 25 from the 44 this time. Moniz. Over the middle, Salas the catch, inside the 25, beats a man, and is close to a first down as he gets by Quinton Bird, the nickelback. He is so strong, yards after the catch, the big stat with number one. Now we talked about Moniz not turning the ball over so much, and he, he, this is the ice in his, in his veins that the guys, he, those interceptions, he sits in the pocket, zips a great throw to Salas, and you're seeing right there the size, the spin, strength, of, of Salas, and that's why they like this guy for, in it, for the NFL coming up next year because he can go across the middle and makes great catches every time. 23 yards, second and two at the 20 yard line of Utah State as they get a huge chunk back. They go to the run game with Green straight ahead and appears to have the first down inside the 19 yard line. And Nessie, the 290 pounder on the tackle, the nose tackle. Right now, Nick Rolovich, the offense coordinator for Hawaii, is winning the battle of minds, the chess match, match of, of, of how this game is going. This offense is moving pretty freely up and down on this Utah State defense. Moniz has had all the time he's wanted. He's been pressured once where he got out and they lost that because of the penalty. But outside of that, he's had all day long to sit back there and do whatever he wants to do. Remember, this is a team that ran for over 300 yards last year in Honolulu against the Aggies. They're having that same type of success here early. Hand off to Green, and this time tougher yardage, three yards to the 25-yard line. Anessi again on the play. This is where defensively they got to step up. You got to bone up and bow your back. Don't allow this offense to just freely move down. Bill Bush may have to start to dial up some blitzes like we saw two weeks ago against La Tech because if you can't get regular pressure off your front four, then you're going to have to do something extra. And Coach Anderson has made it a point, put the 11 best athletes on the field regardless of size. They've upgraded their speed 
Yeah, in terms of that category here at Utah State, but they're facing a well-oiled machine here with Moniz and the Warriors in this one. Second and seven, pressure coming over the middle. Polaris the catch, and that's a first down to the Aggies' five-yard line. So dangerous, and the quick release from Moniz as well. We just talked about it, saying that lot, you know, Utah State had to apply some pressure. Here comes the blitz, but look at Moniz. He reads it, gets the ball out of his hands quickly. He knows he's going to get hit, gets into his other playmaker, Polaris, who knows how to, to catch the ball across the middle and get positive yards. This is why this coaching staff is so excited and made the comments that Moniz may be the best that they've ever seen there because of plays like that. Ten yard catch by Polaris, a former running back, former slot guy uh, at the slot position this year. He's played all over the football field. They'll hand it off to Green straight ahead. And on first and goal, he gets a little bit of that yardage down to the two. It'll be second and goal from there. This is almost smash mouth football by the University of Hawaii. The way that they're just spreading this defense out, making them guess, are we running, are we passing? And it gives you confidence as a visiting team on the road when you can handle the other team's blitz. Now, we've only seen one, but the fact that they've been able to do that, that gives you momentum. And a chance to score on their opening possession. Moniz was picked off by Roderick Coleman. Another chance here, second and goal from the two. Green straight ahead, driving for the goal line. He's in. Touchdown, Warriors. The mix of the run and the pass, and Green was uh, the blue-collar guy in that drive, and he finds the end zone. Well, it got behind that big side of the left line. Austin Hanson, left tackle, Bryson, Ginlack, and all those guys did was just create a big seam, push a big hole there, and when you have a big back like Alex Green, it's not very hard for him to get one or two yards. Green's seventh rushing touchdown this season as they cap off a 91-yard drive. Eno's for the extra point. And the senior from Granite Bay, California, drives it through there. Two impressive drives, one score for Hawaii. The visitors from Honolulu looking for their fifth straight. Forget search engines. Anyone can access instant, unlimited background checks with BenVerified.com. You can look up anyone who comes into your home or life. Never before has background checking been this easy. No stranger comes around my growing family without a background check. Search new acquaintances, find lost loved ones, or look yourself up. Even monitor changes with round-the-clock alerts. Isn't it better to know for sure? For a free trial of unlimited background checks, go to BenVerified.com slash TV163. Oh, oh, awesome again. Oh my god, this is really good. That's why your parties are the best. You should do this for a living. He's right, you've always been like the best cook. Ever thought of going to La Cordon Bleu? Seriously, you should. Yeah, you could train with all those experienced chef instructors. Yeah. yeah. You're an artist, go work with other artists. You should call La Cordon Bleu today. Yeah, call right now. Yeah. Call them. Seriously. Do it. You know you want to. If you call, you get a complimentary career guide. Call La Cordon Bleu campus at 1-800-719-7065. 1-800-719-7065. <laughs> Hi, this burrito is from the gentleman over there. What is it? It's the new Beefy Crunch Burrito for 99 cents. Bold. Get bold with the crunch. The new 99 cent Beefy Crunch Burrito. The crunch of flaming Hot Fritos chips, seasoned beef, and nacho cheese sauce. All for just 99 cents and only at Taco Bell. Why pay more? It's more than a car. Your Subaru is part of the family. The people of Flatiron Subaru understand how deep these bonds run. It's why we work here. Our experienced sales staff will help you find the Subaru that's just right for you. With such dedication to customer service, it's no wonder why people at Flatiron Subaru see the same great faces coming back again and again. Flatiron Subaru, decidedly different. Welcome back to Logan, an impressive drive for Hawaii as they get on the scoreboard first. Alex Green capping off a 12-play, 91-yard drive. Great balance. It was definitely great balance. It started with this punt. Utah State did what they needed to do to pin them back, but Hawaii just took that and marched down the field. 91 yards with great runs by Alex Green. 
great throws by Brian Moniz when they're down in situations. And then to punch it in right here playing smash mouth football. This Utah State defense is going to have to step up and not allow that to happen when they get back on the field. But more importantly, this offense now has to respond. They have to put points on the board. As if the Utah State defense didn't have enough to think about. Now they got to be concerned with the run game, and that makes this offense uh, even more dangerous as they'll kick it away with Enos. And it's Kerwin Williams across the 25 for the Aggies. Williams breaks free for a moment to the 40. End of the 45-yard line. Williams, one of the top special teams guys in the WAC. Third in the conference. He averages over 25 per return. This is man-on-man. -man. Curran does a good job of getting behind his blockers and then using the speed on special teams is so important not to dance too much, make a cut and move. He has a long of 70, and he was trying to match that on that run right there. You know, that's the uh, wax fourth best all-purpose guy, Kerwin Williams, is see the numbers there. 37-yard return. First down, Aggie short field now at their 45-yard line. Straight ahead, spate on the carry, a couple yards up to the 47. And that's it. Glad you're with us. We are in Logan, Utah. Merlin Olson Field, Romney Stadium. Great setting for football. Fall day, overcast. A little bit of rain in the forecast, but uh, nothing uh, that uh, would keep a lot of people away. An important game for Hawaii as they look for their fifth consecutive win. They currently lead the WAC. Utah State trying to get back-to-back -back big home wins after beating BYU on this field. Burrell over the middle. And he goes to Dante Watkins, his leading receiver, and the sophomore to the Hawaii side of the field at the 48-yard line. Third and short coming up. Manageable. This is one of the things Dave Baldwin, the offense coordinator, wants to see his quarterback in. Get him in third and short, opens up the playbook wide open. Now they're going to go hurry up offense here. No huddle look on third and short. Hand off to Spate, trying to stretch it to the outside. Can't get to the edge as he is swarmed under. Good pursuit, Lemetrius Davis, the senior corner from Portland, was there to play on the sideline. What you're talking about right here is the speed of Hawaii is taking over right now, forcing the runner to go lateral. And just right there, that play right there, because he got, got tripped up by John Hardy Tulawi, that allowed the rest of the defense to get there. And this, right now, this Hawaii team is clicking on all cylinders, offensively and defensively, even though special teams have given up some big plays. And you saw Greg McMacken there, 30 plus years coaching from a defensive background. A lot of uh, excitement about what his defense has been able to do in terms of turning people over. They get a stop right there and force the punt team out. And now we have a whistle. Delay game, offense, five yards, fourth down. You want it? So Caldwell, after getting off a booming 66-yarder, will try to pin Hawaii deep here. Not a good sign here in the early stages for the Aggies. They're not able to generate anything. Coach Anderson's offense has been stagnant. Well, there's always two things that can happen coming off a bye. When you have a bye week, either you come out rejuvenated, really playing hard, or sometimes you're a little bit flat because of that week off. Another booming kick. And that one is easily going to find the end zone. Caldwell with altitude and a strong leg. And that combination easily carries the end zone. And Hawaii will get it back at the 20-yard line. Warriors have two possessions. Already one touchdown on the board. They'll try to get it together again, leading 7-0 on the road. This is a... It says, I will not compromise. I will not back down. I will not give up. I will never sacrifice joy in the name of practicality. The Wicked Fun, Wallet Smart, Mazda 3. So, so. Sign and drive off in a Mazda 3 for just $1.99 a month with zero due at lease signing. So, so. When those get hard to understand, and finances get in Come to Papa. I'm Papa Frank, and we'll be giving away a free car October the 30th. That's right. We'll also be giving away free prizes every day from September to October. Please come and test drive a car and enter to win that free car October 30th. Come to Papa. 
Alex Russell is filling his car with quality Conoco gas for the first time. Using Conoco cleans his car's engine, making it very, very happy. Which is fortunate for Alex because today is the day his car was planning to run away and live in the woods. Nice work, Alex. Help maximize your car's mileage, lower its emissions, and increase its performance with Conoco. Because your car knows. We made it faster than a Mercedes C350. Gave it more torque than an Audi A4. And more horsepower than a BMW 335i. The new 2011 Lexus IS350. Because it isn't real performance unless it's wielded with precision. Lease offers available on select models, such as the IS250 all-wheel drive for $4.59 a month for 36 months, with zero due at signing, zero first month's payment. It's for a special season at Hawaii. This won't be a trap game for us. We did that two years ago in a loss to Utah State. Well, they're trying to prove that point here early. They look very impressive in the early going here in Logan. First down after the touchback at the 20-yard line for the Warriors. Moniz near sideline, catch made by Salas. He has, you would think he has stick him on his gloves over there. Makes it look so easy bringing the football in five yard game. Well, there's a reason that this guy's an NFL prospect. But you look at Moniz, he, the read's really easy for him right now. You throw the ball out there, you're just playing pitch and catch. When you go against a spread offense, your defense is gonna do one or two things, zone or man. And when you have a man-to-man -man coverage in that type of situation, that's very hard for the DB to cover. Good numbers early on for Moniz, with the exception of that interception, the pick by Coleman in the end zone. Second and five, Warriors their third possession at the 25-yard line. All kinds of time. Deep ball, he wants Bradley. He can't come up with it at the Aggies 37, and he had beaten his man, Bradley, with that speed at six foot out of Dallas, Texas. Bradley is definitely taking charge on the bottom side of the screen. You're going to see Moniz, he looks left. He looks back right, comes right back to him. This quarterback has great maturity in how to read the field. And right there, he just has the corner completely beat. That's Curtis Marsh. I'll take it back. That's Cameron Sanders. Cameron Sanders has to do a better job of staying with this guy right now. He's only a freshman, and I think Hawaii's trying to exploit that right now. Bradley will get a breather. Billy Ray Stutzman, a redshirt freshman for Honolulu now into the game. He is split to the bottom of the screen on third and five. Moniz, all kinds of time, now pressure coming. Now he fires on the run, open man, Polaris, the catch. Is he inbounds? No, out of bounds at the 47-yard line. The defensive back did a great job of hitting Polaris while he was still in the air. And that's Marsh that did that while he was still in the air, not allowing his feet to come down inbounds. Otherwise, that would have been another third down conversion. Moniz gets out the pocket, but you're seeing this throw right here. He hits him and does not allow him to come down inbounds and that's a great play by Marsh right there making sure his team gets off the field and give that offense an opportunity to come back out and make a play. Boy he really sold out on that play Jay. Uh, you can appreciate that being a former corner. He just laid himself out to uh, stop that play. He is their top cover corner senior out of Simi Valley California. Well Polaris is no small uh, human being you're talking about a guy that's 5'11 205 so he's very compact he's very stout that's a lot of weight that you as a DB you're trying to come up under and hit and uh, again Marsh just did a, an exceptional job by coming up there and making that play it's a real challenge for these Aggies DBs with uh, trying to deal with these physical receivers and this has been a year that uh, has uh, they've been beset by injury you see six starters lost including their leading rusher at 1,300 yards a year ago, Robert Turbin there. Morrison was their top receiver. Smith, a senior, also went down during this season. They've also had injuries on the offensive and defensive lines, but uh, they keep battling. Hopefully, Marsh is okay. Motes calling for the fair catch, and he makes it for the Aggies at the 30-yard line. Big defensive stop there. They needed to find some way to slow down Hawaii, who was really in a rhythm. They did. Hawaii kind of has been hurting themselves. We, we talked about it earlier, the fact that Bradley was running 
wide open and beaten Cameron Sanders, the freshman DB, but couldn't make the catch. That could have even been for a touchdown. And for this defense to take that as a wake-up call and to get out on a third down is huge. Now what has to happen, this offense has to get on track if they want to be in this game. They cannot do what they did the past two series, a couple little dinks and dunks. They have to spread this defense out. The goals according to Coach, Coach Anderson, protect Burrell, give him manageable downs. They've not had that here in the early going. They'll hand it off to Spade on first down and a big gain and he bursts out of there up to the 38 yard line for eight yards. And that is a, a good start to getting the running game going. Spate did an excellent job of reading the offensive line, taking the scene. And as you see right here, he just slow plays it. And all you running backs need to understand that sometimes you don't hit the whole full speed. You have to let it develop. Great speed, great power to break tackles. Second down and two now. And end around, Alder, the receiver, throws it back to Burrell, and he's got some running room. Blocker in front, and Burrell out of bounds on the Hawaii side of the field at the 48-yard line. Austin Alder, the junior from Provo, Utah, on the end around, threw a perfect pass to the Aggies quarterback. Stub linebacker Aaron Brown of Hawaii saves a touchdown. You're going to see here the nice little reverse, the throwback to Burrell. Burrell's trying to get up and down the sideline. You can see Aaron Brown come right into the picture right there. If Aaron Brown doesn't pop in there, that might be a touchdown. 14-yard pickup. They hurry up to the line of scrimmage. Handed off to Kerwin Williams and a good gain inside the 45 to the Hawaii 43. Five yards on first down. And they're going to go up tempo now. They're going no huddle here. Sometimes when you do have that bye week and your offense is flat, this is the best way, what I like to call the two-minute movement, where you get your offense on quick plays. They're going to split Kerwin Williams there, running back, top of the screen now, empty backfield on second down. Throw it to the tight end. It's Kellen Bartlett, and the junior has a first down to the Warriors' 35-yard line. The crowd is starting to get into it and get involved. As you can see right here, Burrell just sits back there, reads what the defense he gives him, gets it out to Bartlett. Nice play. He catches the ball, steps out of bounds, but still, that is the kind of momentum that this offense needs. They need to drive down and put some points on the board. We saw this team in their last game a couple weeks ago at Louisiana Tech. Couldn't get anything generated. Had a couple field goals and a loss to the Bulldogs. They're showing some flashes of what they're capable of on this drive. First down now at the Warriors 35. Burrell from the gun. Pressure coming downfield with the ball, and it is incomplete. He wanted Emmanuel Ojeriaki, the sophomore Nigerian kid who has not had a catch this year. He almost came up with one. Jeremy Bryant for Hawaii. The DB did a nice job breaking that ball up. You're going to see right here, Burrell stays in there, gets hit. Gets that ball off, still makes a great throw. Emmanuel couldn't come up with the catch, mainly because Jeremy Bryant came over the outside. But you're seeing right there, Burrell knew he was going to get hit. That's why this guy's been a leader and a captain of this team. He knows how to get that ball out. Aggies on the move. That was the final play of the first quarter. Second quarter coming up. And some life here in Logan for the home team. Thus far, the Warriors' offense has been the story. 7-0 Hawaii. This Low prices, fast service since 1949. Get your tires today at Peerless Tires for Less. The Bridgestone Insignia SE200 is great for a smooth, comfortable ride. These all-season radials will go the distance through any weather as low as $56.99. And the Firestone Precision Sport, a reliable H-speed rated tire with high-performance all-season tread for a confident ride all year round as low as $66.99. When you need tires for less, come to Peerless. Tires for less. All right, I must admit, I can't explain any of these thoughts racing through my brain. It's true. The baby, I'm howling for you. Cadillac CTS Sports Sedan. A car and driver 10 best for the third year in a row. Right now, get 0% financing for 72 months on a Cadillac CTS Sports Sedan. Cadillac, the new standard of the world. Brandon Yip and the rest of your Avalanche get ready to square off against Dustin Brown and the LA Kings. Avs, Kings, puck drop, Saturday, 6.30, only on Altitude. Dish Network claims to have the same TV as DirecTV for less. 
But did you know that their basic package includes 30 radio stations and dozens of TV channels you've probably never even heard of? So why does Dish Network call it America's Top 120 if you only get a few decent TV channels? With DirecTV's basic package, you get the highest rated channels with all your favorite shows. So don't be fooled by Dish Network. When you compare, DirecTV wins every time. When you're looking for creative ways to grow your business, when you need targeted advertising that draws in customers, when you're ready to improve your bottom line, TV advertising works. Advertise your business in the hottest programs and reach thousands of potential customers. We can help you develop a marketing plan that is exactly what your business needs to get ahead. So contact us today and see why TV advertising works. Call 1-877-48-TV-ADS or visit tvadvertisingworks.com. Hey, Scott is here for the Pro Football Summit. We get into what happened in that Jets game with the Broncos. What's going on next week with the Raiders and all around the NFL, the Pro Football Summit. Been a long time coming, but the wagon wheel now in possession of the Utah State Aggies, a traveling trophy in the Utah State BYU series. They get it after beating BYU 31-16 on October 1st, first win since 93, and here's Burrell, first play of the second quarter, breaks one, touchdown Utah State. 35 yards, and it was smooth sailing for the senior quarterback. This is what they were talking about. The playmakers helping out Burrell. You're going to see right here a nice little option. He comes down the line, jukes the defender. Defender does what he's supposed to do, take away the pitch. And Burrell does the rest with his legs, reminiscent of a few weeks ago against BYU when he rushed for all those yards. And this is what this offense needed. Get the stagnant out. You've been sitting around for two weeks. Drive down the field, put some points on the board, help your defense out. His fourth rushing touchdown this season as he caps off a 71-yard drive. Caldwell ties it with the extra point. Good start for the second quarter for Utah State. DeAndre Burrell, one of the top dual threat quarterbacks in the country. You got to respect his ability on the edge. And that's what's important about this. Hawaii just put together a 91 yard drive. So the fact that you can come out and you put together a 71 yard drive, that's answering the call. Burrell being a dual threat. They've made a couple passes. They still need to stretch a little bit downfield, but we'll see if that happens as the game progresses. But the fact that he's been able to get out on the edge, create that kind of play and make that run. Now the defense is going to have to play a little bit more honest when Burrell has the ball in his hand. There you see the scoring drive. What a special career he's had, Jay, at Utah State. Now over the 7,000-yard marker in terms of total yardage at Utah State. Second all-time in total offense at Utah State. And a guy that originally was a wide receiver that they moved to quarterback in 08. He set a, a, a team record in terms of quarterback rushing yards, a school record that year. He's developed into a complete quarterback now. You know, being a quarterback isn't always about the guy with the best or strongest arm. Sometimes it has a lot to do with the ability that a person has in regards of motivating his team and understanding all the different things that they have to do. So that's what you're seeing with Burrell is all these records are reminiscent of him being more than just a quarterback. He's a playmaker. And four interceptions thrown uh, last year. As you saw, that was a record as well. The kickoff from Diaz, and here's a big return from Hawaii across the 40-yard line. Goes Dustin Blunt, and the Warriors will be in excellent field position at the 42-yard line. You better watch out for special teams. The return guys have a lot of speed on both sides. Special teams is huge, and you're seeing right here in this situation, Dustin Blunt gets another seam. And here's the key of all punt return, kickoff returns, is run one speed. Don't jitter, jabber, cut left or right too much. Just get up the field, and you'll always get big yards. Yeah, Blunt, a 10-6, 100-meter guy, showing off his speed there. So knees, and the Warriors will start this series from the 41. All even at seven, early stages, second quarter from Logan. Here's Green, spins away from a tackler and good yardage across the 45, give him five yards. Green runs hard, a senior from Portland, Oregon. Well, when you talk about rushing, too, with Alex Green, I mean, he's, this defense is spread out, so back that size can cut in. But 
having a guy like Alex Green helps what you're trying to do with the starts that Hawaii's had in regards to what they're trying to get done this year. This team very easily could come down to them and Boise State for the league title. Yeah, Hawaii appears to be uh, peaking at the right time. We'll take a look at uh, what they have done thus far this year on second down. Pressure coming on Moniz, and that's a sack. That is Levi Koskin, the junior from Smithfield, Utah. He leads him in sacks this year. That's four this season. Levi Koskin limped off the field a few series back, comes back with a fury. He basically beats Latui on the left side and just brings him down. Does a smart thing. His hand at first is up by the face mask, what could be 15 yards, but he slides his arm down. He gets it out of the way, avoids that penalty, and gets his defense a big play to force third and long. And this is kind of the Coach Anderson philosophy. Undersized guys on the edge that can rush the quarterback. Haskin is one of those. They've moved linebackers up front. They've moved safeties to the linebacker position to improve their overall team speed. It's paid off. Third and long now. Moniz, Polaris, he's close to the first down at the Aggies 49. The tackle made over there right at the stick by Bobby Wagner. Now, the, in this league, the WAC, you're looking at, again, the spread offense right here. Two guys went deep, and you bring Polaris across the field. And what that does is it opens it up because the people going deep are pulling the linebackers out of there. That opens that middle up, and that's why that play was connected like that. Good enough to move the chains. Breakout season for Polaris, fifth in the nation in receiving yards per game. Enough for the first down on that one. Warriors have been moving the football up and down the field. Moniz is going to roll right this time. Looking downfield, now he's going to tuck it and run, and he's chased out of bounds behind the line of scrimmage. Kyle Gallagher with a great play, and he ran a long way to get there, the middle linebacker. A long way, and he did the smart thing. He stayed inside out. He forced the quarterback to the sideline. That's like an extra defender. And Moniz, he doesn't want to run if he doesn't have to. In fact, he was trying to tell his receiver to go deep, go deep but the DBs did a good job of keeping them in front. The greatest quote I've heard all year from any coach, uh, Coach Anderson says about Gallagher, he plays like he has an extra body in the closet. He just sells out on every single play, and that was a perfect example right there. Second and 10 now. Here comes pressure. Moniz, quick release, incomplete behind Pollard, and his throw was rushed that time. Koskin providing some pressure. Definitely, Moniz saw something, but he didn't have the time to get that ball out. Coach Anderson talked about that. We said it kind of in the first quarter. You can't allow him to sit back there and be comfortable, and you're seeing right there, that's called a behind-the-shoulder throw. He's trying to get to Rice Pollard. When the DB has great coverage, the quarterback, you see it a lot in the NFL, they'll throw it behind the defender, so the receiver just makes a quick a little turn and catches the ball. Hawaii two for three on third downs. This is a third and ten. Let's see if the Aggies dial up some pressure right here. Showing blitz. All three linebackers, here they come. Moniz fires it out of bounds, and that is going to be a pass interference call, I believe. Stewart trying to stay with Pollard, and that's unfortunate because there's no way they complete that pass. Rashad Stewart, when you jam a receiver, you have to eventually let him go. And he had such a good jam. Holding defense number 18. Legal forward pass, 10 yard penalty, automatic first down. So because he jammed him so well and Moniz was under pressure getting the ball out, the receiver didn't get up the field. Now Gary Anderson could argue that that was still within the five yard mark, but nine times out of 10, the, the, the referee will throw that as a pass interference or holding like well, we just did. And they dialed up the blitz perfectly. They had all three linebackers coming and that was Moniz's only option. And the Aggies bail him out. First down out to 39. Draw, green, straight ahead, hit and dropped. Walter McClinton, the strong safety in there. Kyle Gallagher, also the middle linebacker. That's what you have to do on draws. You have to allow it to develop. But as a defense, you gotta wrap up. You gotta meet the running back at the line. And that, that was a nice defensive stop. This defense is starting to pick up steam. They're starting to slow down this, my, this Hawaii attack. Pick up of a couple yards. Quinn Garner was in the middle of that play on the run, second and eight now at the 37. Trips to the left side again, showing blitz, and they're coming after Moniz. Fires it off his back foot, he wants Pollard, and it is tipped away and almost intercepted. 
And that time, Stewart with a great defensive play near the pylon. You're looking at a freshman, a true freshman, 5'11", 170-pound DB. This Utah defense, the defense corner, Bill Rush Bush is saying, you know what, we're playing man-to-man, -man. we're blitzing. You gotta cover your guy, and that's exactly what Rashad Stewart did there. He battled, he battled, and he won that battle. You can see again, this is just a great play. Going up at the highest point, not allowing the receiver to come down with the ball. That's what you want to do as a DB. If you can't pick it off, don't let him catch it. You mentioned it, a true freshman out of Miami with a big play here, third and eight. Ruiz, screen, inside screen, Polaris breaks a tackle, and the second effort got him in the first down. And the Aggies, they wrap him up there. He's well short of the first down, but it looks like he has it inside the 29. Trey, you talked about it before. He was a former running back, so he loves to run into the middle of the field, and they're going to see it's a simple bubble screen where he comes into the middle, allows those big offensive linemen to get out in front, create some holes and pockets for him, uses his side, and gets a first down. Rain starting to come down here in Logan. Early second quarter, high game, but the Warriors on the move. First down now at the Aggies' 29-yard line. Muniz has some time, pocket collapsing, running out of there, room to run, and he slides short of the first down at the 20-yard line. He won't run often. He has a touchdown run this year and doesn't need to run because of uh, all the weapons he has. Well, he's, he, this guy's mature. Like I said, th they were very excited that everything happened the way it happened for him to be the starter. But you're looking right here. He, he's very patient in the pocket. Even though there was nobody there, he wasn't trying to run out of there until it absolutely collapsed on him, found the seam, and got out of there. You're looking at guys only six feet tall, but think of Drew Brees and those other types. He makes plays just like they did. Second down and two now as we near the 10-minute mark in the second quarter. And there's an errant snap. Moniz goes back and picks it up on one hop. Now he shovels it incomplete off of the chest of Salas, and it'll be third down. Boy, was that a train wreck of a play, and Hawaii lucky to keep the football. That is what you call ingenuity. The fact that the play was could have been bust. He could have just landed on it, but he didn't. He was able to scoop it up. Now he's looking to throw, but nobody's there. And what does he do? Tries to improvise and toss it underneath. The big thing about that is they don't lose any yards. If he gets sacked, they lose all the positive yards he had gotten before. But by doing that, they're able to maintain that third and short. And puts him in a manageable third and two at the Aggies 21 yard line. And now Moniz on the sideline here. They call a timeout with 10 minutes to go in the second quarter. Now the rain is starting to fall here. We'll talk about that when we come back. All even here in Logan and the weather has taken a turn for the worse. We've got a good one here at Utah State. Have fun. Have fun. Me too. Me too. More room, more peace of mind, a lot more fun. The seven passenger Mazda CX-9. So, so. Now get 0.0% .0 APR for up to 60 months. Lodos Bar & Grill have the best rooftop patios in Colorado. All the major sports packages broadcasting in high def. Not a bad seat in the house. Lodos serves delicious American food, burgers, pasta, seafood, pizza, steaks, sandwiches, and more. Join us for happy hour. Food and drink specials every day of the week. Three locations, downtown Denver across from Coors Field, Highlands Ranch off C-470 in Quebec, and Westminster Federal Boulevard at 104th. For more information, visit lodosbarandgrill.com. So, car toys can do everything a carrier store can do? New service, upgrades, and I can choose from four carriers? Yep. Can I keep my old number? Uh-huh. Add to my family plan? Sure. And you can set it up for me? Absolutely. You're good. For a limited time at Car Toys, all phones, buy one, get one free. Including the newest smartphones on new activations, upgrades, even family plans from all carriers. Wanna play? Get your toys. Car Toys, a better way to go. Wireless. I believe a good solid education is one of the most important things to pass along to our kids. And kids are the top priority at the Tim Tebow Foundation. So that's why I teamed up. 
with Groove Auto's Drive for Education program to give Colorado kids what they deserve, a brighter future. To learn more, visit our websites or a Groove dealership near you. Together, we can all help Colorado's kids succeed in the game of life. Storyline developing in this game uh, midway through the second quarter. Wind and rain, 25 mile per hour winds were told. And the rain coming down pretty steadily here in the second quarter. Big third down and a couple for Hawaii trying to keep this drive going at the Aggies 21. Empty backfield for Moniz. Pressure on him, over the middle. Salas the catch and a first down to the 17. Wind, rain, whatever, he is one of the best in college football. You have the best defensive player, Bobby Wagner, coming through Scott Free, gets pressure on Moniz, does what he needs to do, and Salas, again, shows why he'll be playing on Sundays come next year. All this guy does is catch balls that come anywhere within his body region. Five catches, 73 yards for Salas. Another first down as you look at the wind picking up now in the driving rain here in Logan, Utah. Going into the wind on this drive from the 17. Hand off to Alex Green. Room to run to the 10, to the 5, and a touchdown for Hawaii. They answer with two big plays. A catch by Salas and Green with his second touchdown run and the visitors back in front after that 17-yard scamper. Right right now, they're fighting the seams on the outside, sealing it off. You can see right here again, Bobby Wagner gets, gets caught inside, doesn't keep his contained, allows Alex Green to get outside, and you can't allow 6'2", 230 pounds to get rolling downfield because that's what's going to happen every time, a touchdown. Scott Enos has not missed an extra point in his career at Hawaii. The last two years, trying to make it 14-7, and that one is good, and it's 14-7 Hawaii. Alex Green, the big story here in the first half, caps off a long drive with the second touchdown of the day, running off left tackle, and the Warriors' ground game. The story, they're in front on the road. You know, people always ask me how I was able to win three championships during the course of my career. Well, let me draw it for you. This is me, these are my teammates, and this was our route after practice. Nine tasty flavors, so many sides. Wow, every call from the Wingstop playbook looks incredible. Wingstop was always my favorite play. We called it the Wingstop Wildcat. Wingstop, the official wings of me, Troy Aikman this week on the Altitude Sports Summit. Hey, on All Sports Summit show, we get into everything. How about the Av start to the season? What's going to go on with the Denver Broncos? And how long will Dan Hawkins be the coach of the CU Bus? All on All Sports Show. Truck owners demand versatility. At this year's Nissan Truck Rally, they showed us how they get it. Utilitrack's a great system and it's very sturdy. Nissan came up with it. There's all different kinds of accessories. You can slide right in, you tighten them. I've tied down. Water heaters back here. Motorcycle. Fencing. There's nothing you can't put in it. Get up to $5,000 cash back on Titan. Up to 3,000 total savings on Frontier. Innovation that's versatile. Innovation for all. Visit your Front Range area dealer. Everyone has fears. You've conquered most of them. Conquer the mountain. You've conquered the machine. You've conquered the air. Now, do you fear these wild beasts? Rattlesnakes, wild boar, buffalo, Kuro Buddha? Conquer your wildest fears at Rhodesio Grill. Rhodesia's wild game fast is happening now, every night for a limited time. It's our poker night on altitude. The Heartland Poker Tour is paying big every Sunday at nine. Don't miss some of the most daring bets, bluffs, and busts from across the country. The Heartland Poker Tour, every Sunday at 9, only on Altitude. The action of the ninth annual Sheridan Hawaii Bowl at Aloha Stadium December 24th in Honolulu. For tickets and travel, visit www.sheridanhawaiibowl.com. Hawaii with seven wins, locked into that bowl game. They've got a battle on their hands here in poor weather conditions in Logan, Utah, but a nice 59-yard drive capped off by Alex Green's second touchdown run. The Warriors in front 14-7 here in the second quarter. Enos to kick it away. 
Harrison Williams back deep, and it'll be one of the up backs. Carrying it for Utah State, and the ball comes free at the 26. Tialavea on the carry, he keeps it, and they'll mark him down at the 26-yard line. That is a defensive lineman uh, returning it, and normally you tell those guys just to take a knee. And he tried to punish somebody right there, and I, I can tell you, as a, uh, I used to be on the kickoff team, now Grant as a safety guy, and every time they broke through, I'd scream at everybody else, do your job, I'm not supposed to tackle that guy, I'm a safety. <laughs> Tialavea, a big kid as uh, Burrell and company go to work. We're in Logan, Utah. 9.22 to go second quarter. Hawaii looking for their fifth consecutive victory, leading Utah State 14-7. Alongside Jay Taylor, I'm Trey Bender. Glad you're with us. Weather wasn't a story in the first quarter. Is now in the second quarter, and there's a fumble by Burrell, and he'll eat the football back at the 18. Now that is the second play. We've seen an errant snap on the Hawaii side, and now Burrell trouble with the football on this drive. Well, he tried to stick it into Joey Diamartino's pocket right there but he wanted to pull it out you have to make a decision in that type of scheme when you're doing the option if you put it in there you have to leave it in there or take it out sooner because he delayed on doing that is why the ball hit the ground second and 18 now coach Anderson said we want the chilly weather we want the adverse conditions we'll set up a screen this time and it's through the hands of Spate and incomplete but amazingly, Hawaii looks a little bit more comfortable in it than Utah State does, and they say it does rain on the island. It, they, it rains on the island, I think, every day just about. And so they're used, they practice in the rain all the time. I can remember when I was at San Jose State, and we played over there like the first quarter and a half it was raining. So that's nothing new to them. The only issue would be the cold, but everybody has to deal with the cold. And right now, it looks like Hawaii is better prepared than Utah State. Utah State going with the win, but a driving rain here, and this is a tough to ask of the quarterback. Third and 18 at his 18-yard line. Burrell flushed out of there, throws underneath. It'll be well short of the first down, out of bounds. He wanted Bartlett to tie it in, and it'll be fourth and 18 coming up. Burrell didn't have a chance to set his feet. This Hawaii defense was smelling blood in the water, especially when you have third and long, it makes it so much easier to, to get quarterbacks off the field. And you're seeing right there as this rain's coming down. <laughs> Coach was back and I was watching the, the equipment girl came up, wanted to give him a jacket. He's like, no, no, I don't want a jacket. I don't want a jacket. <laughs> yeah, Coach McMackin has uh, had a lot of coaching stops through the years, but um, uh, I'm sure he's seen a few of these. On fourth and 18, Caldwell from the eight yard line. Pretty good kick considering the conditions. And a short return for Hawaii as bringing it out to the 43-yard line is Ryan Henry, and that's where the Warriors will have it first and 10. Hawaii in front. They have the football. The rain continues to fall and will be a bigger story, it appears, as this day wears on. Want wings? Choose from nine mouth-watering flavors at Wingstop, the wing experts. Your car's all ready. Wow, everything? That was fast. We do our best. Grease Monkey's full service oil change includes checking and filling all your car's fluids. We vacuum, wash exterior windows, and set your tire pressure. Everything your dealer does to keep you under warranty without selling you anything you don't need. Thanks, I really appreciate it. Grease Monkey, only what you need, guaranteed. For special offers and a location near you, go to GreaseMonkeyCarCare.com. Peterson Volvo gives you what you may not expect from a car dealer, an enjoyable shopping experience. Our friendly and professional staff makes it worth your drive to Fort Collins. You have made us the sixth largest pre-owned Volvo store in America with IntelliChoice's best luxury certified pre-owned program for two years straight. Stop by or check us out at petersonvolvo.com. The best cars, the best prices at Peterson Volvo. 4455 South Mason Street in Fort Collins. Volvo for life. Altitude is your home for Colorado Avalanche Hockey. 
with pre- and post-game analysis that includes exclusive locker room interviews, an all-access weekly show featuring your favorite players, off-ice personalities, and every game is now broadcast in high definition, making Altitude the premier provider of Colorado Avalanche hockey. Altitude, your home of the Colorado Avalanche. Steady rain continues here in Logan, Utah. Hawaii has the football starting their series from the 43-yard line after the punt from Utah State. Already a couple touchdown runs from Alex Green. Moniz gonna put it in the air over the middle. It's tipped and it's almost intercepted. Through the hands of Kyle Gallagher, the middle linebacker, and Coleman had a beat on it from his safety position. Now, Hawaii says they can play in this stuff, but uh, they didn't look uh, secure on this play. Now right there, you got good pressure on Moniz. And what this defense of Utah State is doing now, defensive coordinator Bill Bush has said, you know what, we're going man to man. Every corner is going to line up on a receiver. You're taking a receiver. We're going to start bringing pressure. We're going to make Moniz uncomfortable like they just did so they can try to get off the field. But this puts a lot of pressure on those corners in wet weather, right? It's tougher on the corners than the receivers. It is definitely tougher, but as a DB, I can tell you I would relish the opportunity to be able to do that. Here's a shovel pass to Alex Green, and that's a good defensive play by Walter McClinton, the strong safety. He read that play right away, short game, third and long. Any DB that's worth his salt wants to tell the coach, let's just go man to man, let everybody do what they got to do. I'm going to shut my guy down. And, and in order for Utah to be effective and stop this team, that's what they're going to have to do because Moniz has proven, if you don't get any pressure on me, I'm going to sit back here and pick you apart. He's completed 66% of his passes this year. The Warriors are four of five on third down, third and nine from the 44 yard line. Aggies coming with the blitz. They set up the middle screen through the hands of Pollard and incomplete. Coaches can say that it's not a factor, but it's obvious it, it is right now for those receivers. Not only was that a slight factor, if that ball was able to be caught, that would have been another Hawaii touchdown. But because of the weather, the bad snap, he does a good job of getting it. The pressure's coming. There was nobody, and I mean nobody, for Pollard to have to worry about if he catches that ball. And, and that, that's what's huge about the rain, is if you do make a mistake. And there's a bobble snap to Naki, almost has it blocked, and he somehow gets rid of the kick inside the 35. And we have had numerous exchange issues here midway through the second quarter. It is raining hard. Well, what happens is when it's cold, your fingers start to freeze, and right there, it's hard to get your hands on it. And, and the, he just misses it. Now, I don't understand why he doesn't have any gloves on. Normally, punters may not wear gloves. But in this type of weather, when it's incumbent, when it's raining, and it's cold, you need to put that extra protection on your hands because those type of things happen. Punters aren't touching the ball every snap. Coach Anderson this week said, I, I don't mind if it's chilly. I rain, sleet, bring it on. That's what he was hoping for leading into this game. But his offense has not shown an ability to do anything uh, in this weather. Let's see if they can get it going here from the 33-yard line. And off to Spate, and he's hit right at the line of scrimmage and leans forward for a yard, maybe two, to the 35-yard line. Now, they understand they're still in the game. There's still plenty of time. They get the ball first in the third quarter. So you do want to call some plays and set some things up, get the running game going. But right now, if you look at the offensive set of Utah State, it's all bunched up right now. So it allows the defense to really tie in. Where Hawaii's on the field, they're spreading Utah State apart, finding the scene. Yeah, they've got a double tight end alignment right now. They'll run option. Burrell going to keep it, nowhere to go. Tried to cut back, and there was no lane. They really bottled that play up a yard, and that's it. And, and, and that goes to the point I'm talking about. Offensive coordinator Dave Baldwin has to spread this Hawaii team out, allow Burrell to see some lanes, allow Spade to see some lanes, and put themselves in a better situation. Coach Anderson talked about that. He says the guys around Burrell have to play better, but also us as a coaching staff, we have to call better plays to help him succeed. Torres, the strong safety on that last tackle, third and seven now for Utah State. Two receivers to each side in a bunch formation again for Utah State. Burrell keeps it and swallowed up a loss back at the 35-yard line. Good pursuit that time as Pai Pai Falamalu, the sophomore from Oahu, the defensive end was there. 
You're going to see right here, it was going to be another option, and Hawaii, right there, he's back in there. Falamalu is right there, sticking his face in it. There's no way for Braille to go. I go back to what I just said a play earlier. As a defensive player, if you shrink the area I have to defend, I can be more aggressive and play better. And now a strange formation here. Caldwell is back as the punter. They rotate guys up to the line, and now they bring three blockers back in front of the senior punter, and he'll get the kick away at his 20-yard line. End over end kick. Henry will field it at the 10-yard line for the Warriors. Cuts back against the grain. Still trying to get to the far sideline and finally driven out of bounds at the 27-yard line. Very fortunate that they didn't get any penalties or anything like that. There's a late one. Some pushing and shoving going on after the play, and they'll sort this out. Normally when your guy runs sideways on punt returns, that's usually meaning clips and things could happen. you got to go north and south, but because he got tackled on the, the, vis the home team sideline, extra activity got kicked up, and we're getting ready to see what's going to happen right now. Looks like they're going to back him up here, Jay. There's an old rule. When you go into the enemy's territory, just get up and walk away. Nothing good happens on the other side. Oh, personal foul, number 28, kicking team. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. So that on Coach Anderson's team, Joey DiMartino, the sophomore from San Diego. No, actually, yeah, it is DiMartino. They're going to move the football now up to the 41-yard line. Got to be smarter than that. Got to be smarter than that. Your, your situation right now, the weather's bad. You had a decent kick. You held them. They were trying to create a big play. And what do you do? You give them 15 more yards to try to make something. And right here, you see they do a good job of keeping them from getting anywhere. But right here at the end is where you got to let that stuff go. Rain continues to fall here, and now a stoppage in play. Timeout, Aggies. Utah State, first charge, timeout. Jay wanted to talk about Utah State and how it's been a roller coaster ride this season. Coach Anderson wanted this team to play lighthearted coming into this one. He was hesitant to play up the emotional side of things. Homecoming, Merlin Olsen statue, the wagon wheel and everything else. He said, I don't think my kids are ready for that, being such a young team. And, and I think that's the thing about it. This is a young team. Even though you have some leaders in Morrell that are seniors, overall, it's still a young team. So there's things they have to learn to play. And that's what Coach Anderson has been trying to teach these guys. And when you talk about that, you look at the BYU game. He was able to pull them together and, and do something that hadn't been done here in 17 years. And he's trying to get them to play that way every week and not just certain weeks. And so that game was huge. The guys had momentum. They came in here. They handled BYU. The defense was stout. Offensively, they put points on the board, but then they went to La Tech the very next week and then laid an eight. Yeah, they held BYU to just 59 yards rushing. They rushed for 242 in that big 31-16 win. After the timeout, Mooney's going deep, has a man open. It's caught by Rodney Bradley, and he's inside the 10 and down to the Aggies' three-yard line. Bradley, the senior for Dallas, beating Sanders down the sideline for 47 yards. Sanders has had a very, very difficult day on these deep routes. And you're seeing right here, Moniz just sees it, throws it up, allows his receiver to run underneath it. And Bradley's been open a couple times. He's tested Rashard Stewart a couple times. And now Cameron Sanders. But Cameron Sanders, this is the third time that he's gotten beat deep. But this is the first time they actually completed it. And he has to. When you're in man to man, like I said before, it's corner, you got to relish it. You can't allow that to happen. That's a 67 yard pass play in the books now. First and goal from the three yard line. Play fake by Moniz. Rolling and throwing, and it's intercepted. It's picked off by Marsh. What a big play by the Aggies, who had their heels back to the goal line. Marsh was, Marsh was covering his guy which is running into the flat. And you're going to see right here as Moniz, he's trying to let this route open. And Salas was over it right here, open it right here in the corner. Or not, I mean, Pollard, but he wanted to get the ball to Pollard. And he didn't put enough air on it. And Marsh comes off of his receiver and makes a nice play. 
Moniz would love to have that ball back. That just is one of those plays that you got to throw away. There's just too many bodies in the end zone. But nice play by Curtis Marsh. Coleman and Marsh with interceptions in the end zone are racing drives and two critical turnovers. This game could be 28 to 7, but an opportunistic defense has saved the day uh, here in the first half. So the Aggies now get it back at the 20-yard line after the touchback. They'll run it with Spate, and he carves out about three yards on the left side to the 23-yard line. Now, this is where I think the passing tag has to come into play. Coach Anderson talked about the fact that he didn't want his defense to give up big plays. That's what happened in the Law Tech game and all the other games that they've lost. Defense has given up big plays. The difference, I think, in today is the fact that the defense is also making big plays as well as giving them up. They'll give up the yardage if they can come up with stops. Second down and seven now. Burrell over the middle, and that's a first down grab hauled in by a sliding Moats at the 34-yard line. The junior from Highlands Ranch, Colorado, moves the chain. Now, that is the first time that I've seen them. Now they've opened up a little bit. We've seen a double dig route, throws it to the, the tight end Moats coming in from, or the receiver coming in from the backside Moats, and that's what you want. You want to open up this defense, allow Burrell to see some lanes, get the ball out of his hand. First down at the 34. Again, that double tight end look. Bartlett and Lloyd shift to the right side of the formation here from the 34. Bobbled snap. Burrell trying to do something with it now. He'll run to the outside, and he gets a couple yards after the 36-yard line. You have to be patient. And that, I think that's a part right now that both quarterbacks are not understanding when the ball is wet and it's cold. You have to wait just a second more before you try to take off. Make sure you have the ball. Make sure you've secured the ball. Still time left. 3.35 to go first half. Coach McMacken soaked on that Hawaii sideline. His defense has played pretty well today in adverse conditions. Burrell setting up a screen, and he just got rid of the football. He heard footsteps. Hank Correa, the 280-pounder, was after him right up the gut. Here's a look at the... Honolulu guy, sophomore. The screen was supposed to go to Curry Williams right there. You're going to see the defense did a good job of not allowing the back to get through. Most screens are only effective because you've been passing so well that the defense rushes up. They have to pass a little more in order for that to work. Third and nine now. They have Watkins split to the bottom of the screen here. They've not converted on a third down yet today, 0 for 4. Burrell, pressure up the middle, tries to escape it, flushed out of the pocket, and he sacked at the 30-yard line. They did a great job collapsing the pocket that time, and credit number 47 right there with a nice play. That's Jordan Monaco. You're going to see right here, Burrell, nothing's there. At this point, he should have kept running, but he didn't. He tried to create more with his legs staying behind the line of scrimmage, trying to see if his receivers would get it over. As a quarterback, sometimes you have to understand the time to run and the time to not. That was definitely a time to run. Yeah, that was Zach Mash, and he is not even on their three deep. A defensive lineman redshirt out of Nevada City, California with a big play. And they'll force the punt team out there. The Warriors going deep into their bench to get a big defensive play as Caldwell punts it away, end over end. Hits at the 35 and will be down in the vicinity of the 30-yard line. Brian Moniz has thrown just four picks all year, two of them here in this game. Well, when you look at this first one, he's, he stored down, and Roger Coleman did a great job staring him down. And then you're going to see here the, the center didn't get the ball, but he made a smart throw by getting away. And then this was a bad one right there where Curtis Marsh was able to make a play. He should have threw the ball away, gave his team an opportunity. But again, Moniz, that gives him six NITs for the year to 21 interceptions. That's still great control, but he'd love to have those two throws back. Well, that hurts at the end of drives, though, doesn't it? That uh, can really come back and bite you. They still do have the lead, and they've got the football in good field position after the punt at the 32-yard line. Trips to the right side for Muniz, setting up the inside screen. Pollard, the catch hit immediately. They read that play. McClinton, the strong safety, has been all over the football field. He was right on him. That's how you stop the bubble screen, the receiver screen, however you want to call it. McClinton was on the inside. He saw the play develop, and what did he do? He went to where the receiver was trying to go. McClinton out of Arlington, Texas, home of the American League champion, Texas Rangers. Second down and nine now from the 33. Gallagher coming on the blitz. Moniz delivers as he's hit and incomplete. Salas 
the intended receiver, but the blitz has bothered Moniz here in the first half. Coach Anderson talked about it with us earlier this week. He said we cannot allow him to sit back there and be comfortable. So what does that mean? We have to dial up blitzes, we have to get pressure, but we can't let this guy sit back there and pick us apart because he is too good of a quarterback. Salas, uh, maybe some miscommunication, ran into his own receiver on that last play. Third and nine now. Another blitz down for that Aggies defense. Now, there are four, there are four or six on third down conversions right now. Three of those conversions that they got were 10 plus yards. So this defense definitely has to do the job again to try to get off the field. Backing off on the blitz this time. They'll run the football to the right side with Green, and that's going to be well short of the first down. Very interesting conservative call there for a couple yards to the 36. Under two minutes to go first half. Well, I, I think that's that's the smart. It was conservative, but it's smart. You don't want to put the ball up in the air. Pressure's been coming. So what do you do? Just hand it off and see if your big back Alex Green can get some yards. Uh, McLaren to get a, get a, did a good job of getting Clinton. I mean, get, did a good job getting up there making that tackle. But that's what you want to do, protect the ball. Moats awaiting the punt from Danaki at the 18-yard line. Hit it off the side of his foot. Takes a sideways hop, though, and gets a nice Hawaii bounce inside the 25-yard line and will be down right at the 25. Wasn't pretty, but it was effective in the rainy, windy conditions for McMacken's team. And the Aggies with 1.15 to go, and they also have some timeouts to work with. Well, here's the two things. First, you get the ball uh, 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 in the second half, third quarter first. That has to be in the back of your mind. So in this drive, you, you, you would like to get a touchdown, but you got to think, let's just drive and get the field goal range and see what happens. Because you want to protect yourself. You don't want to create a turnover and allow them to put more points on the board. Coach Anderson has a couple timeouts to work with. First down from the 26-yard line. Burrell already has a touchdown run. He's going to keep it here on the option. Can't get to the outside. He's hemmed in at the 27-yard line. Hawaii's done that a couple times. They bottled things up, and that was a guy we talked about earlier, Mash, from his defensive line position. Well, as you look at this play, they're ready for it. They understand that is a staple play for this Utah State offense. They may have to go away from that play. I understand that that's how they got their first touchdown, but they caught the defense in the right defense. Other than that, this defense has been ready for that run play. Second and eight, under a minute to go. Let's see if the Aggies try to go downfield or play it close to the vest here. They will run it. It's going to be Spate. Spins out of one tackle and eases it forward to the 31. And the clock still running, and no one's going to take a timeout here. And I think both teams content right now with a 14-7 ball game. I, I think so. I would have liked to have seen a little bit different, maybe throw a screen or something in there, see if you could pop one big one, and then go ahead and eat the clock out. But it seems Coach Anderson is very content on getting out of here, just down by seven, knowing they get the ball first. So both defenses have their say in the second quarter. Weather had a big role, obviously, here in the uh, latter portions of the first half. And we have a 14-7 game at the break. Hawaii in front looking for their fifth consecutive victory. Early on, the Warriors uh, played their game, and their, their running game was very effective. But uh, the Aggies with an important score there, the run by Burrell to get them back in this one. They needed that. That was something that this offense, like I said, when you have a bye week, if you're going to come out on fire, you're going to come out flat. It's very rarely in the middle. They came out flat. That run by Burrell, that whole entire series to respond with a 71-yard drive after Hawaii put up a 91-yard drive was huge. And that, that's what this offense needed. But they still have to go to the play calling. They have to get some better things going, just like Coach Anderson told us. He goes, the guys around him, have to help Burrell out, and us as a coaching staff, we have to put him in better situations to help our team. So a wet homecoming game here in Logan, Utah, and Coach McMacken uh, heading to the locker room. You see him there with a 14-7 halftime lead. So the Warriors, early on, it was the running of Alex Green that was the story. The Aggies answered. And the defense is stepping up with big plays in the second quarter. We've got a good one here at Romney Stadium. Seven-point game. Forget search engines. Anyone can access instant, unlimited background checks with BenVerified.com. You can look up anyone who comes into your home or life. Never before has background checking been this easy. 
No stranger comes around my growing family without a background check. Search new acquaintances, find lost loved ones, or look yourself up. Even monitor changes with round-the-clock alerts. Isn't it better to know for sure? For a free trial of unlimited background checks, go to benverify.com slash tv163. When those get hard to understand And finances getting out of hand Come to Papa I'm Papa Frank and we'll be giving away a free car October the 30th. That's right, we'll also be giving away free prizes every day from September to October. Please come and test drive a car and enter to win that free car October 30th. Come to Papa. Can you stand, please? Take one. Right now. Much better. <laughs> Hi, uh, there's a patient from upstairs pretending he's a doctor. Just be aware. Cadillac Escalade. The most acclaimed luxury SUV ever. Right now, get 0% financing for 72 months on a Cadillac Escalade. Cadillac, the new standard of the world. Altitude is your TV home for Colorado's high school football matchups. Featuring a game every week with top perennial powerhouse schools and defending 5A and 4A champions. Giving you the most comprehensive coverage of the state's top high school football program. Get all your high school football action at one place. Altitude, sports and entertainment, your home for high school football. It's halftime in Logan, Utah, with Hawaii taking on Utah State. Amazing catches, interceptions, and dives over the line were on fields across the country last week. And of course, they made our list of top plays for week seven. 25-30, get away to the 40, front race to the house, touchdown Wisconsin! Stay with us, we'll show you the latest trend in school spirit and we'll visit with Utah State Athletic Director Scott Barnes. All that plus highlights and stats after this. One day you will film the world. You will save lives, discover cultures, build robots, or explore the heavens. But until then, prepare for the journey ahead. Discover. Inspire. Innovate. At the University of Hawaii at Marlowe. Because every journey begins at home. 
Everyone loves our $10 any pizza deal so much. We're lowering the price of every pizza on the menu. A large pizza with up to three toppings is just $10. Every pizza at a great price, every day. Now lower prices, only at your Pizza Hut. I am a Broncos fan. I am a Broncos fan. We are Broncos fans. I shop at King Super. King Super. I use my Super card. I use my Super card. I bleed orange and blue. I bleed orange and blue. I buy official items of Broncos country. Broncos country. Rush to King Supers to win exclusive prizes when you buy official items of Broncos country. Only at King Super. I am a Broncos fan. And will forever be a King Super shopper. Rush to King Supers to win your official headquarters of Broncos country. Oh boy, you make me feel like, oh boy, you make me feel like no boy can make me feel like you. I really, really want There's more to life than a Volvo. There's the freedom to change your mind and to change it back again. Introducing the new 2011 C70, exceptionally well-equipped at 39,950. There's more to life than a Volvo. That's why you drive one. Come see the new Volvo C70 at Peterson Volvo, 4455 South Mason Street in Fort Collins. Everyone loves our $10 any pizza deal so much. We're lowering the price of every pizza on the menu. A large pizza with up to three toppings is just $10. Every pizza at a great price, every day. Now lower prices, only at your Pizza Hut. It's halftime in Logan, the Warriors taking on the Aggies. In this next story, resist the attempt to adjust your set. It seems Boise State's unusual football field has started a trend. Here's how the famous Boise Blue is influencing other schools across the country. Home games at Boise State come with a warning. Do not adjust your set. It's all thanks to one athletic director who pondered installing a new field for the football program back in 1986 and had a blue brainstorm. There's really no reason that it's green. Why don't we do it in our school colors? I know when I first came here, one of the questions that we'd ask recruits, you know, what do you know about Boise? And they didn't know much, but they knew we had blue turf. People ask, you did a blue field, why didn't you pick orange? And I laughed, I said, hey, look, I might be stupid, but I'm not crazy. <laughs> of course not. Crazy would probably mean something like this. Red with a nice black border, and those two colors, boy, do they go well together. This year, Eastern Washington took a page out of Boise State's book. The result, red turf, a blood bath and beyond field known as the Inferno. Many schools put in fields, and it's ho-hum. The good news for us is, here at Eastern Washington, people are talking. I can't imagine anything worse looking than a red field. <laughs> but not everyone feels that way. Take the Eagles' head groundskeeper. You can just feel the intolerable heat that the inferno is starting to give off. I mean, from your feet up to your top of your head. I thought it was a little crazy, but Honestly, the first thing that came to my head was Boise's home record. The biggest thing that we liked about the color and the red is it was going to give us something to latch onto. Just the people were really going to feel like this was a home field advantage. In Eastern Washington's first game on their new field, the red-blooded Eagles shocked the Montana Grizzlies 36 to 27. It's unbelievable. We had not beaten Montana in Cheney since 1991. And, uh, this field did it. Results like that are sure to spark new frontiers in the turf wars. A rainbow field for Hawaii, stars and stripes for Army. Anything's possible ever since Boise State chose to get the blues. I know there's so many people that are like, take that blue, you guys don't need that blue turf, but we like it. It's kind of part of our identity and who we are. We don't even think twice about it. Coming up, Utah State Athletic Director Scott Barnes joins us, and we'll have highlights and stats for the first half. We'll be right back. At Utah State University, we are rooted in rich institutional traditions. We wake up proud. We move proud. And we sleep proud. But who sleeps when there's a world to move? 
Utah State University, a higher education. Everything a carrier store can do? New service, upgrades. And I can choose from four carriers? Yep. Can I keep my old number? Uh-huh. Add to my family plan? Sure. And you can set it up for me? Absolutely. You're good. For a limited time at Car Toys, all phones, buy one, get one free. Including the newest smartphones on new activations, upgrades, even family plans from all carriers. Wanna play? Get your toys. Car Toys, a better way to go. Wireless. Brandon Yip and the rest of your Avalanche get ready to square off against Dustin Brown and the LA Kings. Avs, Kings, puck drop, Saturday, 6.30, only on Altitude. If you've been waiting for the absolute best time to try a life-changing Tempur-Pedic Swedish sleep system, this is it. Save up to $400 with this Temper Ergo Collection Savings Event. Hurry, limited time. At Mattress Firm, your Tempur-Pedic headquarters. Buy it today, sleep on it tonight. Models in stock and ready for delivery, starting at just $2 a night. Tempur-Pedic and Mattress Firm. Changing the way the world sleeps tonight. Mattress Firm, where it's easy to get a great night. Don't wait. Get the things you need today by going straight to the source. At the alternate source, you get low payments and low interest on everything in the store. Car stereos, rims, home electronics, furniture, and more. You choose the payment options that work best for you. Establish or rebuild your credit while enjoying brand name gear. All credit decisions are made right here, so the alternate source can set you up with financing you deserve. Why wait? Get what you want today with no down payment. Go straight to the source. The alternate source on the Altitude Sports Summit. Hey, on the All Sports Summit show, we get into everything. How about the Avs starting the season? What's going to go on with the Denver Broncos? And how long will Dan Hawkins be the coach of the CU Bus? All on the All Sports Show. To erect a statue, which we did today, and, and we're, we're very pleased with it and, and, and proud of what Merlin stands for. Well, and he, a guy from this area, a community-driven guy, a, a great guy to hold in high esteem. Well, you know, when you think about what our mission is in intercollegiate athletics, it's about excellence in the classroom, on the field, and in life, and he exemplified that. This is a game that uh, Coach Anderson mentioned. Uh, he doesn't mind the, the wet weather. He said, bring it on. Uh, it, you're right in this game. It's been a special year. It's been a roller coaster ride, but a lot of good things happening this year for the football team. Trey, we're getting better. You, you can see it in every facet. It hasn't shown up in the wind column as much as we want. It will. Gary's doing all the right things, and, and the, the competition levels improve, there's no doubt. Talk about the win over BYU and what that means uh, from a recruiting standpoint in state uh, to beat those guys. It's been a long time coming. It's been a long time since we saw that wagon wheel in town, and, and uh, that's the, uh, the trophy between both. 17 years, Trey, since we've, we've done that, and it does mean a lot. It's, it's something to build on and uh, means a lot from a recruiting perspective, as you say, in the state now. Now, you have other things going on here. Obviously, the wagon wheel, part of the great tradition. Uh, it, it really has become something that uh, you'd like to keep for many years to come, right? We sure would. And, and uh, again, Gary's the right guy to get that done. We've made a huge investment in football, number one, with the right leader in Gary and, and what surrounds him from a facilities perspective, scheduling standpoint, and, and dollars to salaries. We're going to get there. Basketball, whack favorites, again. Stu Morrill uh, coming into his 12th year, fourth winning his Division I program in all of America during that time. He has been phenomenal, four returning starters, and a chance to do well again. Thanks for coming by, Scott, and homecoming. Appreciate it. Good to be here. Good to see you again, Trey. Athletic Director Scott Barnes joining us here in Logan, Utah at halftime. It's wet, rainy, windy conditions, but we've got a ball game, an important game of the WAC. Hawaii leading by a touchdown at the break. Western Athletic Conference. We value sportsmanship on and off the field. We respect our teammates, opponents, fans, and officials. We strive for excellence. We strive for excellence. We strive for excellence. This is what fuels us and sets us apart. It's the discipline and integrity to be the best. To be the best. To be the best. It's competing with intensity and passion. This is who we are and why we compete. We are the Western Athletic Conference. Play up. Play up. Play up. everything a carrier store can do? New service, upgrades, and I can choose from four carriers? Yep. Can I keep my old number? Uh-huh. 
add to my family plan? Sure. And you can set it up for me? Absolutely. You're good. For a limited time at Car Toys, all phones, buy one, get one free. Including the newest smartphones on new activations, upgrades, even family plans from all carriers. Wanna play? Get your toys. Car Toys, a better way to go. Wireless. Wrigley's Colorado's Chicago Bar. Enjoy the game on 15 large screen TVs. Wrigley's carries the Bears on NFL Sunday ticket and the Cubs MLB packages. Hungry? Saturday night's one pound prime rib dinner, only $9.95. And join us at Wrigley's for the Sunday breakfast buffet. All you can eat, only $7. Wrigley's free banquet room is perfect for any special occasion. Wrigley's Chicago Bar and Grill is located one mile west of 6th Avenue on Colfax. Go's 2010 year-end clearance sale is on now. And we're saying yes, yes to savings. Up to $12,000 off remaining 2010s. Yes to your lower payments. Lease a new Chevy Silverado for just $2.99 a month. Or a new GMC Sierra for $2.49 a month. And we're saying yes to customer confidence. Every vehicle comes with a Go 3-day, 150-mile money-back guarantee. We're Go. We're AutoNation. Click GoCarsAndTrucks.com. Introducing $10 Tuesdays. Receive $10 off any service in all 16 Go service centers every Tuesday. Fourteen seven, our halftime score, Hawaii leading Utah State. Rainy conditions, it could play a big factor in the second half of this one. Coming into the game, we talked about uh, the passing offense of Hawaii, number one in the nation in that category. That has been neutralized with the weather. And some of the things that the Aggies have done defensively, two big interceptions in the end zone were key in that first half. Whenever you can stop a, a visiting team or any team in the, their red zone, that is a plus. And that's the only reason the score is what it is, is because those two interceptions when he's through that Coleman and, and Marsh – took away from them. But outside of that, this Hawaii offense has been able to move up and down the field pretty much at will without a couple of stops. Let's take a look at the first half highlights and a lot of the action happened in the first quarter. Sure did. And, and Hawaii did the things that they needed to do. Moniz moved down the field. You can see right there Alex Brown or Alex Green doing a great job getting in the big back, doing all he can. You can see right here the pressure put on by this Utah State team is the only time they got Moniz out of out of whack is when they've been able to put pressure on. But right here, Marsh comes up with the big pick in a situation where Moniz should have threw the ball away. Utah State hasn't had too much to brag about this first half offensively. Burrell gets this big run, but that's pretty much been it. They have not been able to get themselves on track offensively. And what's definitely going to need to happen in the second half is offensive coordinator Dave Baldwin and head coach Gary Anderson are going to have to do a better job and figure out how to get this offense going, especially in this weather. And you look at the yards right there. I mean, right now, Hawaii is just crushing them on total yards, average yards per play. And that is really big because there was a couple of big third down conversions that Hawaii was able to get that were third and 10 plus. And so this team has to figure out what they're going to do the second half to get themselves back in control. Alex Green could be a big Big story for Hawaii in the second half. A guy, when he does rush the football, is very effective doing it at over five yards per pop. Does he become a factor in the second half as well? Let's take a look at the standings. Coming into this game, we talked about the importance of this game, not just for Hawaii, but, but also for Utah State as well. The Warriors can win their fifth straight and stay perfect in conference play. They're, of course, gunning towards a, a, a bull bit. But if Utah State can somehow get win number three, they have some winnable games. They could get bowl eligible potentially down the line. This whole division, and it kind of bugs me when I listen to all the talk nationally about the WAC and Boise State. and. You look at how these guys have played against all these other teams head up. They've done well, and this league is very competitive because any of these guys, when you look at Nevada, when you look at Utah State, when you even look at La Tech, some of them, they, they have opportunities to get themselves in bowl contention, especially if things hold pat like they did last year and Boise State ends up playing for a BCS Bowl, that's going to open up for three other teams here in the WAC to get to those bowl games. Yeah, the WAC has made some noise in non-conference play uh, without question. Nevada beating California, one of those we saw what Idaho did last year, uh, winning a, maybe it was what maybe it was the most entertaining bowl game uh, of all last year, the win over Bowling Green, 43-42 in Boise. It's an interesting day in college football, and of course, as we look 
at the scores uh, across America, surprises continue. How about Iowa State beating Texas? It's hard to figure out that Big 12 conference. They, I love parity. And it's huge when you have somebody like Iowa State who's pretty much been the floor mat of that division since it's when it was the Big 8. And the fact that they were able to go against Texas and do what they did at Texas is great. I love the fact what with the LSU and Auburn, that's going to be an interesting game. Coach Anderson joining us now at halftime. Coach, you said you, you said bring on the weather. Well, you've got it. A lot of rain. Uh, your team right in this one. Yeah, that's uh, the the weather definitely came our way. That's for sure. So, good football game so far. You know, we got two cut two teams competing extremely hard. I think our defense done a great job of getting a couple turnovers in the red zone, which has uh, been the difference keeps us in the ball game at this point. Kids are playing extremely hard and looking forward to the second half. Now, Coach Anderson, you talked to us during the week about the playmakers around Burrell making plays, and then you guys as a coaching staff getting him in better situations situations to get points on the board. What kind of things can we expect the second half? Well, I think, you know, with the weather and depending on where it sits, you got to get the run game going. The option, obviously, was a big play for us in the first half to get us in the end zone. We've got to have some young men make some catches. You know, we've dropped a couple balls, but we've caught a few balls, too. So we've got to be able to execute the run game, especially with the weather conditions. you got to be able to stop the run game on the flip side. Coach Anderson, thank you. Thanks, guys. Second half coming up. He mentioned coming into this game, discipline and mindset easier to change than understanding what it takes to have success on the field. The discipline, uh, the, the culture of the program, he's got it where he wants, but to take that over onto the football field sometimes, he doesn't know what he's going to get with some of these young kids. You can beat BYU, you can lose at Louisiana Tech, and maybe they knock off Hawaii today. And, and youth is the crucial point. As a young kid, you're coming into a program, you may have came from a school where you guys were 30 and old, you're three years there or something like that. And so you come to college, you realize it's just not that easy. It's a lot more difficult. So what happens is you have to learn these adverse situations and defensively to come up with the plays that they did at the point in time when they did. It, it, that helps a young team because now that gives them momentum. That gives them the feeling of accomplishment like, hey, we can stop some people in adverse times, and now we just have to capitalize on it. This would be a momentum shifter if they can somehow knock off Hawaii or here at homecoming. Let's take a look at their schedule. It does not get easy next week on ESPNU. They'll go to Reno to take on a very good Wolfpack team. But look at the game at home against New Mexico State, at San Jose State, and maybe Idaho. Three games they have potential at winning. If they can win this one, that gets them to six wins in bowl eligibility. And, and, and for this young team, that would be huge. Coach Anderson's done a lot of great things, as you talked about uh, with the AD, and this team is definitely on the right track. That would just be icing on the cake if they're able to pull all that together and get to a bowl game. Right in this one, trailing just 14 to seven. Early on, Jay, it appeared that Hawaii was going to roll with uh, the way they had their offense clicking. And if it weren't for the two interceptions, they might have 28 points on the board. They might, and, and that's the thing about momentum. It sways as the game progresses. But when you look at what they did in the first part, uh, it makes a big difference. And here again, driving down first drive, Looking like you're going to put points on the board. Big interception comes up. Bad snap because of the weather. And, but this, out of all of them, this is the one to me that's more crucial because they were in a good situation. It was only first down. All he had to do was throw the ball away. For all the great things that Moniz has done and the way they feel about him, that's one thing I think that he's going to have to learn and grow on. As a junior, he'll still have another year. But to understand, give my team another shot. Don't try to squeeze it. The, the quote, the gunslinger, the Brett Favre. Don't try to squeeze in everywhere all the time. A bad throw out of bounds, in my opinion, is a good throw. We talked about uh, McMacken's team and how they're streaking at the right time. They've won four consecutive. They've actually won six whack games dating back to last season. This team is back. They had a, a you know a down year, you could say, last year, not making a bowl, but they're back to those Hawaii teams we used to see with Colt Brennan at the helm, uh, and they're getting a lot of national acclaim right now. And they should. When you look up and down, their whole offense, especially the skill position between Salas and Polaris, and then you got Paul, Pollard on one side, Bradley, who we haven't said too much about, but he came up with some big plays. And, and just what he's been able to do, and you look at the fact that you've been able to be at the top of the nation for so long with your passing attack, that's huge. I mean, teams are nervous about that. They don't want to play against that because they, most teams don't have four DBs they can try it out and try to stop that. And if you're a receiver like, like Salas, why wouldn't you want to play in an offense like that in, in a beautiful area? I can remember playing in the NFL, playing against 
the Houston Oilers back when they were the Houston Oilers and the fact that Warren Moon just picked you apart left and right with those four receivers all over the field and then Buffalo came out with their variation with the three wide receivers. And you're still you, having nightmares yeah, aren't you? Still having nightmares. <laughs> so when you're a receiver you want to be in this kind of offensive system because you're going to get 100 balls. Aggies will get the football first with the wind as we start the second half from Logan. Enos with the kick. Williams will let it bounce through the end zone and the Aggies will get the football on the touchback at the 20 yard line. Their best drive was capped off by the Burrell 35 yard touchdown run. You'd think he'd want to keep the ball in his hands and is the option game the best scenario there. I'm not sure if the option game is the best scenario but coach Anderson said it. We have to get this run attack going when the weather is bad. You have to start to grind. As I said the term earlier Hawaii was playing smash ball football when they scored the first touchdown. That's what we're going to see out of Utah is they're going to have to start to play a smash mile a smash mouth style of game. We'll go with that double tight end alignment again on first down as we open up the third quarter. It's Spate hit at the line of scrimmage and leans forward for a yard and that's it. We talked about Burrell being the dual threat quarterback, one of the best in college football and the numbers back it up. Look at the company he is with. Andy Dalton at TCU ahead of him in terms of passing and rushing. That is a select group of guys. And that is what you call versatility. When you have a quarterback like that defensively, it gives you nightmares because you have to defend both his legs and his arms. Second down and nine from the 21. Burrell looking to put it in the air. Deep ball, man open. And the catch is made for a first down. And it's Watkins, and he goes down on a knee at the 45-yard line. Upset he couldn't keep his footing, but a big play. Play action pass. That was huge. You're going to see right there, Burrell just drops back. And he beats the DB wide open. Lemetrius Davis, I'm not sure what Lemetrius was looking at, but he is beat. And if Burrell can put that wide in front of him, it's a touchdown. 34 yard pickup. Here's Williams into the game at running back, and he's going to be a drop for a loss back at the 47 yard line. That is Kamala Umu, the senior from Kauai. He returned to the starting lineup last week. Umu does a good job of stop, stopping that run, take the momentum out of him. This is the kind of situation where you got that big play. You can't get lax of days ago. You got to continue the drive. Loss of a yard, second and 11 now. They'll mark the football just shy of the Hawaii 46. Opening series, third quarter. Hand off to Williams. Has a seam on the right side. 40. Breaks free for a moment. Has a first down to the Warriors 32 yard line. Kerwin Williams known for his speed, but he let the blockers kind of set the, the tone on that run. That's like like that's like when you make a soup and you have to let it simmer. He let this run simmer. He allowed the seams to open up, and then he used his speed at the last second there. That's how you want to run. Sometimes you can hit the hole hard and fast. Sometimes you have to wait and let it develop. Demetrius Davis, the senior corner on the tackle, first down. Aggies on the move. At the opening of the third quarter, Burrell to throw it and incomplete. He wanted his tight end that time. That was Taron Lloyd, and it was broken up over the middle. Aaron Brown got a good jump on that ball. DeAndre Burrell has to protect it in this kind of situation. Even though the weather's letting up just a little bit where it's allowing them to throw some, you cannot put it in a spot where it can get picked off. And right here you're seeing De Aaron Brown just read his, read his eyes and just jumped all over it. Junior from the state of Washington with a big play on the 6-7 tight end. Second and 10 now. It's time they send D. Martino in motion into the backfield. Split back set. They'll run the option. Burrell, and he has to eat the football, and that's Aaron Brown again. Tackle for loss. Back to the 40-yard line. I, I, I honestly think that play needs to be scrapped. It, it's not working. This Hawaii defense is ready for it. They are absolutely ready for it. And you're seeing right there, Aaron Brown does a good job of scraping the line. Burrell did what he should do, which is eat the ball. Don't cause a turnover. But somehow that, that, that option is not working for him. They're 0 for 5 on third downs. And this is third and 14 at the 36-yard line. Empty backfield this time for Burrell. Watkins is in a slot. You see him there. Bottom portion of the screen. Burrell looking over the middle, has a man, catch is made, and then it's dropped. It is dropped, and it would have been a first down reception by Travis Reynolds, but he couldn't hang on. 
That was a play that you got to have. Coach Andrews just mentioned we got to have the receivers catch the ball. Morrell puts it in a perfect spot right in between his numbers. As he gets hit there by Silva, he just doesn't hold on to the ball. Wet or not, when a ball hits you in the chest like that, you got to hold on to it. Silva, the free safety, getting involved on that play as Caldwell will try to pin him back, and he puts a beauty inside the 10-yard line, down by Nevin Lawson at the eight. Bad weather, Hawaii getting the football for the first time here in the third quarter, leading by a touchdown. Do you want to own a brand new HP, Dell, or other name brand computer and improve your credit at the same time? If so, Tronics Country says you're approved, guaranteed. I wanted a new computer, but I couldn't get financed. Then I called Tronics Country. They approved me, delivered my new computer, and are reporting on my credit. If you have an active checking account and can afford low, flexible payments, you're already approved, guaranteed, for this special offer. There's no credit check, so you won't be turned down. Tronics Country approved me quickly. I got instant approval, and it was easy. Their flexible payment plans made it easy on my budget, and my kids are getting ahead in school. I started my own business, and now I'm my own boss. Call now, and with your paid order, we'll add a free color printer, free MP3 music player, and free LCD TV. You heard right. Free printer, free MP3 player, and free LCD TV. Call now and tell us where you want your brand new computer and free gift shipped today. I'm glad I called. My girl's perfect in every way. Bought her ring for that special day. Everything was going great, I see. Cause she saw how much I had to pay. Don't get soaked paying double. The Jewelry Exchange has thousands of GIA and EGL certified diamonds at the guaranteed lowest price. With setting and sizing while you watch. Save up to 80% buying factory direct. At the Jewelry Exchange. Online or in-store. After 33 years in business, Broadway Dodge has been sold. This liquidation sale is being held in two places, Brandon Dodge and Cherry Creek Dodge. Save thousands. Hundreds of new and used vehicles must be sold regardless of loss of profit. Savings up to 15000 Zero percent financing. All credit has accepted, plus I'll pay up your trade no matter what you owe. Come to the all-new Brandon Dodge, 5600 South Broadway or Cherry Creek Dodge, 2727 South of Banner Aurora. Price, selection, financing. We've got it all. Nobody beats a deal in Dodge deal nobody the Warriors Alex Green's been a big part of the Hawaii offense and you can see right here this guy is big and he has speed he's able to wear the defense down a little bit he hits the hole because this offense is so good with Moniz and passing and right there it's just pretty much smash mouth lineup driving into the end zone He's had some good yards today, and those two TDs are the difference in the game right now. They might have to lean on number 25 a little bit more here with the rain continuing to fall here. Third quarter, Hawaii leading by a touchdown, starting this series after the punt at the eight-yard line, and now penalty flag comes in. Offense number one, half the distance, first down. It's on Salas, the All-America candidate. They'll back him up half the distance. He's cold. He's cold and he shivered. <laughs> and he moved a little bit there. But you're going to see, you can't, yeah, you can't do that. You cannot do that. He got excited a little bit. And uh, offense should never jump offside. I can understand what defense do their one call, but offensive guys should never have a false start. First and 15 now. Football back at the three-yard line. Moniz will take the snap from the end zone for Hawaii. Pressure coming, right sideline, Polaris with the catch, breaks the tackle, has a first down across the 20, and out to the 24-yard line. 21-yard reception, that's what they do so well. Salas, Polaris, yards after the catch, they're big, they're strong. Polaris has gained 30 pounds in his four years at Hawaii. And in this type of situation, it's first and long, the corner play too far off, allowed him to come up there and make the catch. And you're seeing Quentin Bird miss the tackle. And this guy was a running back before he's a receiver. So he knows what to do once he has the ball. He had eight catches, two of them for touchdowns and the big win over Nevada last week. And now they've got some breathing room. Football now at the 24-yard line. Moniz, plenty of time. Deep ball. Salas threw his hands and it completed the 37. And you really want to blame the weather there. You just don't see this kid miss many opportunities. He doesn't, and you, what you're seeing right now is as a receiver, yeah, 
your, your, your fingers are cold. And the ball was a little bit behind. It may have went through there because of the weather. But right there, he just, he just that's a bonehead play right there. He's like, ah, I can't believe I just let that go through my hands. That was too easy. But the weather does play factor because when your fingers are cold, it's really hard to squeeze that ball. The ball actually gets harder. That's three drop balls now for the Warriors. Second and 10 now at their 34-yard line. Single back is green. Moniz downfield and that's deflected. He could not get the ball past the line of scrimmage. Junior Kayaho, the local kid from Logan, former defensive end, now their stud linebacker. He does a nice job. The rule of thumb is if you can't get to the quarterback, get your hands up. And what does he do? He can't get there. He jumps up, he gets his hands up and knocks the ball down. There's a song we hear every time we do a few games, they always play that song, get your hands up. But that's what defensive <laughs> linemen are supposed to do. He's 6'3", 243 from Logan. And forces a third down. The Warriors are four of seven on third downs today. Moniz has plenty of time. Over the middle, Salas has it this time. And a first down catch to the Aggies 42 yard line. Stretching the defense vertically as he beat Marsh on the play. They caught Utah State in a zone and the corner and the safety didn't, safety did not get over far enough. Moniz sees it, puts it right in the middle where the hole is. And it's a big catch. That was a cover four. There should have been the safety squeezing on his upfield shoulder, didn't do it. Curtis Marsh had to come in there and make a tackle to stop that play for a touchdown. 35-yard pickup, six catches, 108 yards already. A guy that is uh, averaging 130 yards per game right on pace to uh, come up with those numbers again. Near sideline incomplete as Moniz throws it behind his intended receiver Pollard on that one. I think he's trying to throw another back shoulder throw right there. But that was a situation where the receiver and the quarterback was not on the same page. But you got to understand, Coach Anderson has to be upset and frustrated. I mentioned it before. Out of the third down conversions, like that makes, I think, four of them or five of them that have been more than 10 yards. So you back a team up, you get them in third and long where you want them, and then you allow them to convert the first down. They're driving into the rain, into the wind here, third quarter. First down at the Aggies 41 yard line. Pressure up the middle, Moniz has time downfield. He wants Pollard, dives, can't come up with it. Near the goal line, a great effort from the junior and he almost had six. Now Rashard Stewart was on coverage again. The freshman was running step for step, but he did the one thing that you're not supposed to do. As he turns his back, he drifts inward, leaving Pollard by himself. When you're a DB and you look back for the ball, you have to match the speed. As you can see right there, he didn't match Pollard's speed, and luckily Pollard didn't come up with the ball. Pollard, who got rid of the long locks and on his 21st birthday in June, short haircut now. Couldn't quite come up with that one. Third down and 10. Here come the Aggies. They're blitzing. Backside pressure. Moniz gets rid of it somehow. Caught by Green. But that'll be for a loss back to the 42. He spun away from the sack there somehow to get rid of the football. We see why the coaches say this guy is so special. Defense did a great job coming with the blitz. Moniz sees it. Nobody's open. Wheels around and has the presence to find somebody open and still get rid of the ball to eliminate even a bigger loss. Roderick Coleman thought he had him. Danaki now will try to pin them back, but he hits it off the side of his foot. And that will be a break for Utah State. They'll mark the football up the field at the 25-yard line. Aggies get it back. Still a one-possession game here in Logan. Hawaii by seven. Everyone loves our $10 Any Pizza deal so much. We're lowering the price of every pizza on the menu. A large pizza with up to three toppings is just $10. Every pizza at a great price, every day. Now lower prices, only at your Pizza Hut. Hey honey, it's me. Can you start the washing machine? Technology. It's not really my strong suit, but I get by. Figured out how to program my thermostat. And that saves me 280 bucks a year just by pushing a few buttons. Not bad, huh? What can you do? Find out at togetherwesave.com. Energy saving tips brought to you by Tri-State and your local Touchstone Energy cooperatives. Always looking out for you. 
Peterson Volvo gives you what you may not expect from a car dealer, an enjoyable shopping experience. Our friendly and professional staff makes it worth your drive to Fort Collins. You have made us the sixth largest pre-owned Volvo store in America, with IntelliChoice's best luxury certified pre-owned program for two years straight. Stop by or check us out at petersonvolvo.com. The best cars, the best prices at Peterson Volvo, 4455 South Mason Street in Fort Collins. Volvo for life. Everyone loves our $10 any pizza deal so much. We're lowering the price of every pizza on the menu. A large pizza with up to three toppings is just $10. Every pizza at a great price, every day. Now lower prices, only at your Pizza Hut. Logan, it's been a wet one. Gary Anderson's team in it, though, trailing by just seven. Let's take a look at the quarterback matchup. Burrell against Moniz. Moniz, better numbers, but the two picks costly, and Burrell's team right in the thick of things here, down just seven. Just because it's because of those two turnovers by Moniz. If it wasn't for that, this game would be definitely in a different light. First down at the 25-yard line. Spate running right. Forget about it. He is shut down. Absolutely nothing happening on that side as Hawaii shut it down with the play of uh, Kaniela tu Tuipolotu, the junior from Lahaina, Maui. He just overpowered Napalu right there in that type of situation. And, and that's a tongue twi twister on names, man on man right there. But this old line is not taking dominance over Hawaii right now. The Hawaii Player of the Year, one of the top prospects ever out of Maui, and they're glad to have him. Second down and 10 at the 25. Burrell goes to the air, and it's knocked down at the line of scrimmage. And that was the same guy, Tui Pelotu. Two big plays back-to-back -back from the defensive tackle. And he did again what, what, what I just said earlier. When you can't get to the quarterback, put your hands up and knock it down. He wasn't getting there. He stayed right by the line, got his hand, big paw up there. We like to call them big paws and, and swipe it down. And uh, as a defensive lineman, that, that's exciting for you because that's almost as good as a sack. He's an Arizona transfer, spent two years in Tucson with the Wildcats, sat out last year. Factor on the front wall for Hawaii this year. Third and 10 now. Burrell steps up and fires, and it's in or no, it's dropped. It was right in the midst of the Hawaii defensive back Davis. The corner had it in his bread basket, and there's a flag to sort out as well. It'll be holding on the Aggies. Davis, holding that ball. 68 offense. Penalty will be declined, fourth down. That ball hit Davis in the worst possible spot it could. The hands. <laughs> and uh, Edo, he's upset about that. He was more excited than anything when the ball came to him. That was a throw that DeAndre Burrell would love to have all over again. Boy, the Aggies lucky they have the punt team out there right now. Caldwell fumbles the snap in trouble. He's hit, and it's into the hands of Hawaii, and it's a touchdown for Jeremy Bryant. Another gaff, a bobbled snap, and Caldwell never had it. And Bryant, who also doubles as their starting corner, gets a huge special teams touchdown. That is a play that Hawaii is ecstatic about to get a turnover on the road. Special teams have been huge in this game. Both teams have made plays, but that was just a bobble snap. He tries to get rid of it. The ball gets knocked out there. It's Spencer Smith, Jay. It's Spencer Smith, number nine, not Bryant, number eight, that came up with the loose ball. And the senior from Marietta, Georgia, gets six. And John Hardy, Tuala Uyo, did a nice job by stripping that ball. And the extra point is good from Enos. A special teams play, and the Warriors come up with a big one as they extend the lead to 21-7. Caldwell never had this football. Did not have a chance. Like I said, number 33, John Hardy. Tui uh, made a great play by stripping that ball. And this is the kind of thing that you try to fight against when you play too conservative, when you do too many things because of the weather. Sometimes you have to continue to go after it. Hawaii has proven they've been able to still throw the ball with the weather. 
Utah State has to. They can't just run the ball. They're going to have to throw the ball to get back into this thing because right now, this defense for Hawaii is fired up, playing on all cylinders, and they don't believe that Utah can run on them. David Graves is the guy that came up with the football. He is a quarterback safety, a redshirt freshman from Folsom, California. They also have a safety, Spencer Smith, who wears number nine, but it was Graves that came up with the loose ball off the play. But the guy that you mentioned, Hardy Tuliao, gets a lot of credit, uh, a freshman from Temecula, California, for separating Caldwell from the football. And that's what's important. In most punters, it would have been best if he could have just fell on the ball but he couldn't do it, so they give it up a touchdown. Now what has to happen is offensively, we have to see how this team responds. Enos to kick it away, and it will be taken at the seven yard line by Kerwin Williams across the 25 and tripped up and goes down to 33. There's a flag that comes in behind the play, and they might be backing up the Aggies right here. Usually that's what it is. You can see people pointing in that direction to take it back. Back in the back, number 37, return team, 10 yard penalty, first down. Quinn Garner, the guilty party. Kerwin does a good job getting up in there, using the speed. You can see the block right there. You, can, you can't do it. You got you to gotta trust your guy. You got to let him go by and trust your guy can make one or two miss. That's how, that's the always a rule in special teams. The rain continues to fall here. The Aggies had just one touchdown drive, a 35-yard touchdown run by Burrell in the first half. They're going to empty the backfield here and go with a five-receiver look. The catch made by Mikhail Morgan out to the 28-yard line, tackled right away. That tackle made by Jeremy Bryant, and it'll be a second and short coming up. Well, here's a perfect situation where you go no huddle. You get the momentum going. You're down by two scores now. And incumbent weather, time to pick up the tempo. Second down, four at the 28-yard line. A lot of time left. This is an Aggies team that can score points in bunches over the middle, and that's intercepted. It's picked off by Hawaii, and that is Corey Paredes, one of their stars on the defensive side, the Buck linebacker, his first pick of the season, and it's a good one. DeAndre Burrell is trying to force the issue. He drops back. The defender's right there. He, he doesn't move. That ball should have never been thrown. That's a throw that uh, ninth, ninth or high school, ninth grader or high school player, you don't make that throw. The defender is right there in front of you. And the fact that he threw it, he's trying to press. He's trying to force the issue. He needs to look around, go through his progressions, and you're going to see as he drops back, He's looking at his ball, the ball gets tipped. Tui Pelotu. But, but he still shouldn't have thrown that ball. There is no way that pass should have been thrown. Paredes last week, WAC Defensive Player of the Week for a huge game against Nevada. He had nine tackles, couple forced fumbles, and here's Green now breaking free. Green to the 10, Green to the end zone. Touchdown, Warriors. That is a, oh my goodness. When you look at how this happens, when you get a turnover, you want to, as a defense, try to stop the big play, the very next play. And Hawaii does a nice job of a draw. You're looking at out screens, shake somebody, uses arm strength. This cat is 6'2", 230 pounds, but he runs like he's cat quick. And this is one of those things where they have to protect against the jailbreak. Hawaii has turned around to score two touchdowns in a matter of two minutes. Over the century mark for Green, his third rushing touchdown, and they have busted this thing open midway through the third quarter. Enos, perfect on the extra point. Special teams play, and then the rushing attack of Hawaii. They have done it well here in the second half, trying to run away from Utah State here in Logan. Now up by three touchdowns. Everyone loves our $10 Any Pizza deal so much, we're lowering the price of every pizza on the menu. A large pizza with up to three toppings is just $10. Every pizza at a great price, every day. Now lower prices, only at your Pizza Hut. All right, I must admit, I can't explain any of these dogs racing through my brain. It's true. Baby, I'm Cadillac CTS Sports Sedan. A car and driver 10 best for the third year in a row. 
Right now, get 0% financing for 72 months on a Cadillac CTS sports sedan. Cadillac, the new standard of the world. Low prices, fast service since 1949. Get your tires today at Peerless Tires for Less. For performance at an affordable price, get the Cordovan Solar HP430. It has an all-season tread design for dependable traction and handling as low as $40.99. And you can dress them up with these unique black spoke custom wheels. They'll give your vehicle the look you want as low as $48.99. When you need tires for less, come to Peerless Tires for Less. Everyone loves our $10 Any Pizza deal so much, we're lowering the price of every pizza on the menu. A large pizza with up to three toppings is just $10. Every pizza at a great price, every day. Now lower prices, only at your Pizza Hut. Basketball fans, what better way to spend the holidays than in Honolulu, Hawaii? Don't miss out on the action as the Warriors compete with Baylor, Butler, Mississippi State, and more for the Hawaiian Airlines Diamond Head Classic, December 22nd, 23rd, and 25th. For tickets and travel, visit www.hawaiianairlinesdiamondheadclassic.com. Look at that, the runner-up last year, Butler, amongst uh, the group of teams playing in that game in Honolulu. How about Alex Green, though? Three rushing touchdowns, and this makes this team so much more dangerous when he becomes a, a focal point for this offense. Well, and the, the reason it is dangerous is because most teams, when you play against Hawaii, you're gonna bring in extra defensive backs or safeties. So that means you're taking linebackers out. So to have a running back sitting back there that's 6'2", 230 pounds, that adds a lot of pressure on a secondary. Eno's kick fielded by Williams. He'll come out of the end zone with it. Dangerous return man for Utah State. Trying to get to the outside. Williams to the 30, 35, and a nice return to the 37-yard line. All right, you're the Aggies. You're in bad weather. You're down three scores. Uh, they don't want to force things with Burrell, but you've got to open up the playbook here. You have to open the playbook up. You have to spread it out. You have to go no back sets. Four receivers, but you have to do something to get this defense spread out. Now, Burrell has to do a better job than he did last time. You can't just throw it to an area with the defender standing there. You have to go through your progressions, find the open man. They have the wind with them, though the wind not blowing as steadily as it was earlier in the game. They'll start this series from the 38-yard line. Over the middle, tipped, and incomplete. He wanted his tight end, Bartlett, on that one. And that was almost verbatim the same play that he threw the interception in. You have a linebacker underneath and a DB or safety on top. You cannot squeeze the ball in there. You have to find the single coverage or the hole in the zone. His big play guys are Watkins and Morgan. They're split to the bottom of the screen here. Also uh, split out to the very bottom is Dervin Spate, he's a running back at receiver, looking that way is Burrell, and that's tipped at the line of scrimmage. They're getting their hands up there. I think that was Umu that got his hand up. And what's happening is because this offensive line hasn't established dominance, because they haven't pushed Hawaii back, what happens now is these defensive linemen, as they rush in, they're throwing their hands up. The offensive linemen are gonna have to start to hit these guys a lot harder so their arms cannot go up. Umu with a big 6-3 frame, senior from Kauai, makes it a third and 10 now. Five receiver look. Burrell steps up, Umu's got him, and he keeps his footing somehow, and then finally goes down at the 30-yard line. Umu with the initial charge, and Umu gets the sack. He stays with it, gets the sack back at the 30-yard line. Gary Anderson told us very distinctly that they had to protect Burrell better because that La Tech game, La Tech put a lot of pressure on him, and you're seeing again this Hawaii front four without even blitzing is putting a bunch of pressure on Burrell where he's not having any opportunity to set his feet. And if I remember right, Utah State is towards the top and giving up sacks in the nation. Well, that's a great effort by Umu. Coach McMacken has to love what he's seeing on the defensive side of the ball here. Here's a knuckleball kick by Caldwell, fielded by Henry across the 30. Flag goes down, and he goes down at the 31-yard line. And he appears to be shaken up. Landed awkwardly there. He was trying to dance around a little too much. As a punt returner, catch it and go north and south. If you're going east and west, it's not going to be a good thing. You're going to see right here, he gets it, 
He should go up, and then right there he's going sideways. Oh, and that's how he got hurt. He should have had no business going sideways. Get north and south, get as many positive yards you can get, and then go down. Henry is senior. Number seven, return team, 10-yard penalty, first down. So they will uh, back him up. Uh, Lewis Walker, Salt Lake City kid, the guilty party there. Coach McMacken sensed that this could be a special team. He knows that they could potentially win 10 games this year. But uh, the Sheridan Hawaii Bowl, their first goal, he says, get bowl eligible, get to that game, win that game. Uh, and they know that they've got this guy back next year as a senior. Uh, the future looks pretty bright for the Warriors. Very bright. Not only with him, but some of the offensive linemen coming back the way this defense is shaped. You know, they're going to lose Salas and, and Polaris, but they're still going to have plenty of weapons to continue this dominance on the passing game. Going deep. Downfield Bradley. And it is caught at the Utah State 44-yard line. And he just simply beat his man to the ball, Lawson, on that play. Lawson was in the perfect position as a defensive player. He was running step for step with him. And you're going to see right here, basically, he goes up for the ball. You're taught to go through the receiver to try to strip the ball out. And that's what he did. But you're seeing a better catch by Rodney Bradley to hold on to that ball. They're going to win some battles sometimes as a DB, and you got to understand that. 36-yard catch. Great to see him back on the field. We saw him break a leg at Idaho last year. And uh, he appears to be in tip-top shape this year. Here's Green breaking a tackle. And he carries it down to the Aggies' 37-yard line, close to seven yards on that carry. Gallagher on the tackle. But, you know, we talk about Green and, and this uh, running attack, but it's, it's their receivers that can open up the pass game as well. Well, defensively, let's look at what they had to do. Right now, as you look down on the field, you're looking at a defense that has one linebacker, and defensive ends and a bunch of DBs. So in that kind of situation, that helps your running game because as a big back, the seams are going to be huge. Let's look at Salas, a very good blocker at the receiver position as well. Green straight ahead, and he has a first down, down to the 32-yard line. This is a team, though, when you think about those Colt Brennan teams, the way they threw the football, uh, went to the Sugar Bowl, uh, had a great 8-0 start to their season. This is a comparable team in a lot of ways because of their quarterback and because you don't see guys like Salas and Polaris all the time. And you could argue this group of receivers better than that group that Brennan had. Those, they had some good ones. And I think so. And I think I'll go back to the size. Greg Salas is 6'2", 210. And he goes across the middle regularly and he rarely drops a ball. That makes a big difference when you're a defense trying to defend a guy like that. Looking to score again at the 32 of the Aggies. Moniz going for the deep ball, and he overshoots his intended receiver, Salas, with coverage applied by Chris Randall over there. Chris Randall did a good job forcing the receiver towards the sideline. That sideline is an extra defender. It's your friend, and as a DB, if you can wall him over there, you're forcing that quarterback to throw a perfect throw. Second and 10 now. Randall's been busy today. The other thing about this Hawaii team, Coach McMacken told us this week, they had a different look in their eye in the spring. They've been playing with a chip on their shoulder. That's a good thing to have. This Hawaii team, they're so far away, a lot of people forget about it because we, we don't. <laughs> you got to travel and see. But they, they work just as hard as anybody else, and you're seeing the fruits of their labor right now. Here's a handoff to Demude, Cheesy Demude, with a gain down to the Aggies 27 yard line and a third down upcoming from there for Hawaii, Garner on the stop. And what needs to happen, uh, this, this, this Hawaii team right now, they're spreading them out and they're just eating up the clock. This defense has the surface and it's hard because it becomes demoralizing when as a defense, you fight, you fight, you fight, and then your offense turns the ball over, doesn't put points on the board. As the game goes on, it starts to wear you down. Third and five now at the 27 yard line. Single back is Demude again behind Moniz at quarterback. Pressure over the middle. Polaris the catch. First down grab. It'll be first and goal for Hawaii as he's tackled at the eight-yard line by Chris Randall. That was a zero coverage. Basically, the all-out blitz. Nobody in the middle of the field. As a defender, you can't get beat inside. It made it easy for Moniz just to top it into the Polaris and get your first down. The first rule of thumb whenever you play a blitz and there's nobody in the hole, you make the offensive receiver go around you, go to the outside. 
yard pickup on the catch by Polaris. Now 74 yards through the air. He already has four 100 yard receiving games this year. Looking for number five as they have a first and goal. Demude straight ahead and he slams it into the middle of the line and down to the four yard line. Second down coming up. We talked about how good these this tandem is Polaris and Salas. You could argue the best receivers in college football. And the numbers back it up. Look at that tandem right there amongst good company. But uh, in terms of a one two punch not and, much better and, and they get their yards across the middle. So unlike a lot of receivers that they may get it on outside the numbers these guys make their living in between the hashes and to get that many yards in between the hashes is a huge thing. From the four to Mude, a yard and that's it Nathan Royster in the middle of uh, the play as a helmet comes off there and Aggie lost a helmet on the far side. Backing up Salas and Polaris again at Salas fourth in the nation in receptions per game second in receiving yards per game nationally and Polaris fifth in the nation in receiving yards 10th in the nation in catches per game. I mean the list goes on and on and defensively. What do you do? You can't double team one of those guys because the other person will hurt you and then if you do put too much pressure on them that opens up the running game. So coach Mackins happens because it allows his, his offense to be very balanced. Third and goal from the fourth. They're going to run some option here. Moniz to Demude, and he's hit, and he's gang tackled for a loss back at the five-yard line. Safe to say that is not the bread and butter right there. They don't look like the Navy and Georgia Tech teams that we saw early in the year. That's not their game. That is not their game. It doesn't work. Moniz doesn't really like to run. You don't want to get your quarterback hurt. And that's the kind of situation where this type of offense sometimes can come back and bite you because you can't switch it up to a two tight end set or, or things of that nature. A uh, warrior injured at the 10 yard line right now. That's Austin Hanson, the left tackle. We're in Logan, Utah. Merlin Olson Field at Romney Stadium. They dedicated the Merlin Olson statue, South Plaza at Romney Stadium prior to this game. They celebrated the uh, bringing the wagon wheel to town after the win over BYU, but has been all Hawaii here. The Warriors with a big second half after leading 14-7 at halftime, a special teams touchdown off a muffed punt snap, and then they get the uh, touchdown run by Alex Green, his third of the day. Now Eno's trying to add to the lead with a field goal. Scott is 11 of 14 this year. He's not a long range guy. His long this year 40 yards against USC. But uh, this right in his wheelhouse from the left hash mark. I mean if you're at uh, the way this team scores uh, you want your guys making extra points and he's made all of them in his career at, at Hawaii. Definitely have to do that. And in this kind of situation when you're on the road every point counts. Now we have a, the back judge throwing a flag in the end zone here. And they're going to back him up. Yeah, he wanted to get a better angle, but uh, Utah State will decline the penalty and they'll force him to take the awkward angle here from shorter distance. You would think as kickers, this is what they practice all the time. But, you know, when everybody else is working, and they work too, but they're overall, you know, these kind of kicks should be easy. 22 yarder. Now the hold of Shane Austin, third string quarterback, and the kick is good. So Hawaii adds to their lead a huge third quarter. 17 points on the board in this quarter alone for the Warriors and a commanding 31 to 7 lead now. Right now, Coach Anderson is trying to figure out how he can get his guys motivated to finish strong, to somehow keep themselves in the game. While you look at Coach McMackin, what he's trying to do right now is allows guys to understand let's finish this game off and let's get get out of here without any injuries and get ready for next week. Let's talk about uh, the frustration for the Aggies now. This is a team remember that beat uh, BYU here 31 16 but since that game just six points in a loss at Louisiana Tech and only seven points on the board here they've had a tough time generating any offense. Well and that's the, the crucial thing when I look at the rush yards of, of what's going on. When you're used to tight end set and those type of things, you have to be able to run the ball. That's why you're in a two tight end set. And so there's some things that they definitely have to get better. And I think 
Turbin going down really affected their running game a little bit. Although Spate and these other guys have stepped in and done a pretty good job. But they're not Turbin. And Turbin was definitely a dynamic back, and they'll have him next year. Well, Gary Anderson won't talk about the injuries and how it affected this program, but clearly losing six starters can, can really hurt you. As you look at Dave Baldwin, the offensive coordinator, and uh, trying to piece some things together here, it has been a, a tough day today. Uh, for Baldwin and that gang on that side of the ball. But, you know, they rushed for 242 yards in the win against BYU, but they've not found that. Now, here's a squib kick, and it is recovered by Utah State. Bartlett will run it out to the 43-yard line. It didn't appear to be an onside kick, a squib kick of some kind, but Bartlett was on it. Well, you got to understand, Utah State's been doing a very good job of returning these kickoff returns. So since you're getting hurt, you're going to do something different. Basically, try, try to do a squib pick, get one of the up back guys to get the ball and get a tackle that way so that you're not giving up big yards. But they did a good job of getting the ball. I think people need to understand, as a coach, special, a special teams coach, when you're getting gassed, you're going to adjust what you're doing to try to offset. Yeah, and some fans are upset there. They thought that might be an onside kick. That, that appeared clearly to be a squib kick uh, to try to keep it out of the hands of Kerwin Williams, one of the top returners in the whack. But a short field now for the Aggies from the 43. Burrell downfield, his tight end Bartlett with the grab. It's good enough for a first down. Now that's the first throw that DeAndre Burrell has made in the wild that is actually how it should be where it is. He stepped in the pocket, he stayed there. He wasn't able to complete his, his, his follow through, but still got the ball to the open guy. He didn't try to force it into a double cover. Junior out of Blue Springs, Missouri. With the catch, his eighth of the year. Here's Spate running off right tackle, and Paredes hops on his back and drives him down into the turf at the 39-yard line, four-yard pickup. Paredes right there is one of the best. He, uh, number 41, the Buck linebacker for Hawaii, second in the WAC coming in at almost 12 tackles per game, seventh among all FBS schools in that category. That's huge. You, between him and Wagner, they, they can create a lot of tackles for a lot of teams. On the play fake now, Burrell downfield, throws it up for grabs, and it is caught by, no, it's in, is it intercepted? It is. It is intercepted, intended for Lloyd, and that's the guy we just talked about, Paredes, with the interception. That is another situation, again, where Burrell had no business throwing that ball. He throws it into coverage. And you're going to see right here, Hawaii wasn't fooled. Pressure's coming. The tight end's right there. You cannot just float that ball up there in that kind of situation. There's too many bodies around. Even though you have a tight end that's 6'7", that's who we tried to go to, was Taryn Lloyd. And when you throw it up, if you're throwing it up to 6'7", you got to throw it much higher than that. That's Paredes' second pick of the game. He landed awkwardly here, Jay. Sure did kind of throw backwards on that ankle, but... This guy's making plays all day long today. Couple turnovers now for the Aggies. Moniz to Salas. That's the first down grab out of bounds at the 40-yard line. And Chris Randall's going to have nightmares at the end of this game. He's having a tough time over there. And, he, and he's working hard. And that coverage, that's what you call a speed out. And it's very hard for a DB to cover a speed out because basically the receiver makes one fluid motion, doesn't stop, doesn't break down, and the quarterback throws the ball on timing. So he basically is throwing the ball out there and expecting his receiver to run into it. 12-yard pickup, Moniz to Salas. Salas now seven catches, 120 yards, just under his average per game. And the rain, not much of a factor here in the third quarter, and they're airing it out over the middle. It's guess who, Salas, and it's another first down. Tackle made there by Gallagher, and some talking after the play, but Salas is one tough customer over the middle. This guy catches balls anywhere and most of his, makes most of his living right there in the middle of the field. This Utah defense, unlike Hawaii, where there's nothing in the middle, all the throws that have been real effective outside of the outside, the, the long bombs, have been in the middle of the field. Now, we talked about Moniz and how uh, he started slow in this one. When you look at the numbers now, he is building up uh, some impressive numbers through the air now as we have movement and penalty flags here from the 40-yard line. They'll back up the Warriors. It'll be first and 15, but this is a team we talked about coming in, the number one passing offense in college football, 402 yards per game. 
Moniz has now thrown for 324 yards. We still have a quarter to go. And, and we're talking 300 yards plus with incumbent weather. <laughs> so that, that's what's huge. And he's starting to heat up now after a couple big completions to Salas, looking to go to the air again. Back against the grain, the pass caught by Pollard, and he gets three yards down to the Aggies 42. Wagner did an excellent job of putting that pressure on him, forcing him out. But again, Moniz very elusive, able to get the ball out of his hands and create a play. Hawaii looking for their fifth straight. They're cruising with one quarter to go in Logan. This is a public announcement. CNNMoney.com reports that in some areas of the country, buyers are scooping up homes for as little as $1,000. Foreclosures are at an all-time high. Government and private banks are liquidating these homes now. If you currently rent a house or apartment, you may call now and learn how to receive your free list of these homes. All others may call tomorrow. Every house must be sold. This is a public announcement. Call 1-800-590-6974. That's 1-800-590-6974. Attention computer shoppers with past credit problems. If you've had past credit problems and want to make a change, call now. All you need is an active checking account and you're approved for our program. Bankruptcy, liens, divorce, or job loss, it doesn't matter. You're approved. We'll get you that new computer you always wanted and report on your credit so you can start to get it back on track. Call now and with your paid order, we'll add a free color printer, free MP3 music player, and a free LCD TV. You heard right. Free printer, free MP3 player, and a free LCD TV. Call now and tell us where you want your brand new computer and free gift shipped today. My husband and I, we don't always agree on decorating decisions, but he did make a huge improvement upstairs in the attic. Just by adding insulation, he saved us $240 last year on our heating and cooling. It's a uh, work in progress. What can you do? Find out at togetherwesave.com. Energy saving tips brought to you by Tri-State and your local Touchstone Energy cooperatives. Always looking out for you. This is Ben Landis, filling his car with quality Conoco gas for the first time. This will help lower his car's emissions and remind it how much it likes being Ben's car, so it will quit trying to ruin his love life. Good job, handsome. Help maximize your car's mileage, lower its emissions, and increase its performance with Conoco, because your car knows. Low prices, fast service since 1949. Get your tires today at Peerless Tires for Less. Hankook's newest studdable high-performance winter tire delivers exceptional traction and control for all winter driving conditions as low as $39.99. And eliminate the mounting and balancing costs of snow tire changeovers with these steel winter wheels as low as $45.99. When you need tires for less, come to Peerless Tires for Less. It's snowing in the mountains, it's raining in the Cache Valley, and uh, it's raining footballs right now for Hawaii. They're passing game, kicking it into high gear here. 17 points in the third quarter, and a comfortable 31-7 lead now at Utah State. And the Warriors driving again as we open up the fourth quarter play. 461 yards of total offense, and Moniz showing why he's one of the best in the country at quarterback. Play fake this time, over the middle, catch made by Polaris. That's a first down, and he's bumped out of bounds by Randall at the 18-yard line. Nothing much Randall could do. Again, that's a cross-the-field route when you're in man-to-man -man coverage. You're going to see Moniz fake it there, but basically Polaris is able to pull away, run away from the DB because he's going across the field. And again, Randall can't do much about that except go and try to make the tackle. you got to have pressure on the quarterback to help you out on that kind of route. 24-yard pickup. Polaris impressive numbers now. Seven catches, 98 yards. He and Salas have uh, really chewed up this Aggie secondary. Salas now eight catches, 140 yards.
Muniz for the end zone. Salas, a one-handed grab. Touchdown, Hawaii. That will go into the highlight reels as one of the best catches you will see this year in college football. He snared it in wet conditions here in Logan. Can you say, NFL, here I come? This is why scouts foam at the mouth for this guy. Moniz does a good job, zips it in there, but to go up one-handed with bad weather, pull it in, have the concentration to tuck it away and still score, that is absolutely huge. That is a big play for Salas. 18 yards on that pass play, his eighth touchdown catch this season. Enos for the extra point, and they extend their lead now. 38 to 7. Greg Salas, arguably the top receiver in college football, All American, dandy play. And you can see this is just sheer concentration. People, it's cold here. And to go up with wet hands, pull down a ball like that in this kind of situation, knowing you're getting ready to get hit on top of that, just have that concentration is huge. Salas, 6'2, 210 senior. Definitely going to take his skills to, to the next level and play on Sundays instead of Saturday. That's 15 100-yard receiving games in his career, his sixth time over the 100-yard mark this year. A guy that uh, was one of only four receivers in the nation last year with 100 catches. He's well on his way to 100 again this year. Uh, by my count, he has 70 now. Uh, at this uh, juncture of the season. And there's still so many more games to go. And uh, you gotta think about it. A lot of people say, well, it's the offensive system. Okay, well, well, fine, let's just say it's the offensive system. Well, just like any other, like Alabama gives the ball to the running backs run so many times, this is what Hawaii does. They throw the ball. Well, in order for it to be effective, you gotta have guys that can really catch. Greg Salas is a guy that can really catch. How about this, Salas with 158 yards receiving and the Aggies total 135 yards of total offense. So he has outgained the entire Utah State team in this one. Enos with a short kick and it's fielded by T. Alavea again and the big lineman's gonna rumble with it and he's out to the 37 yard line. He is purposely trying to hurt some people because he's just putting that shoulder down. You're not used to trying to tackle somebody like that. That's like going after Christian Okoye back in the day. No, you don't want to get in front of him. No. A couple flags to deal with as well here. Luckily, when you were with the Chiefs, you didn't have to play against him. No, I did not have to. Personal foul against the Warriors, so they will tack on the yardage here after the return. You're going to say as he catches the ball, he's not looking. He puts his shoulder down and just goes into, and when I say into, he goes into. Another shot at Michael Vick and his old team. ESPN Monday Night Football, Eagles Redskins at 830. Tiger Woods back to defend his title at the Australian Masters. He won here last year. That was 12 days before the car accident that changed his life forever. Tiger on the fourth hole. Beautiful shot that bounces just a few feet from the hole. And then Woods for birdie. Shoots and scores. Woods would go to two under. Ninth hole, here's Tiger for par. And he would sink that. Woods missed only two greens in regulation. He'd remain at two under. He is four strokes back of three players you see there. I'm an American soldier. Yo, how you doing, man? I'm LeBron James, and I want to say thanks to all the truth for what you do. You guys are the real heroes. You guys see me, and you guys see other guys in our sport, and other guys across the sports are always on TV, but without you guys, we wouldn't be able to do what we do, and ladies. So um, thanks, and um, happy Veterans Day. It's not often that a Division Three football team has a presence on this show. Uh, then again, it's not often that you meet a man with a resume like that of the head football coach of D3 SUNY Maritime Privateers. He says it's an honor to be their coach. With Thursday being Veterans Day, we say it's an honor to honor him. Here's Greg Garber. Maritime College, State University of New York, where military service is not mandatory, but three quarters of the students are members of the school's regiment of cadets. 
Last Saturday, the football team finished the regular season 10-0. Touchdown, privateers! By far the best record in school history. The privateers' motto is Warface. Each letter of that word stands for a value that comprises the foundation of this team. I think it's the biggest one, family. This year, I really feel most like in family. The head of that family is coach Clayton Kendrick Holmes, who developed the Warface. He is a lieutenant commander in the Naval Reserve. You don't coach football from nine to five. You live football. Here we go, punt block, punt block. The same thing as a Naval Reservist. You don't do it one weekend a month. You live it. Oh, screw it, screw it. Kendrick Holmes played linebacker at the Naval Academy. Then, after serving three years on a ship, decided coaching was his calling. Boom, got it. Right there. Nice job. Nice. In 2005, he restarted a program that hadn't played a game for 16 seasons. I'm very proud of where we're at right now. I think it's just a, a compilation of a lot of hard work and just continually trying to do things the right way and take care of your people. Back in July, Kendrick Holmes was planning the team's preseason schedule when he got a phone call from the Navy that he was to be recalled to active duty to serve in Afghanistan. It's a call that you're honored to receive, um, and it's something that you have planned for, and now it's time to spring into action. You guys have been incredible, you, all coach. right? It's Woo. been a great job. Yeah. 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 And I've done it for you, too, all right? I've done it for you, and this, we've all done it together. As the privateers look forward to the NCAA Division III postseason, they do so knowing if they advance in the playoffs, they may be without their coach. His training and deployment could come at any time. It's much like we tell our players when, if somebody gets hurt, we haven't designed the program around one person. And so when, you know, it's kind of like next man up for the head coach. In addition to leaving his on-field family, Kendrick Holmes will be separated from his wife and two boys, nine-year-old Wills and 12-year-old Bo. I'm looking forward to when he comes back, but it, it's never really occurred to me that he won't come back. I don't think the boys would ever wonder, because Dad's always taking care of them. You know, that he's, he's always been there. They know that he loves them, and that, um, and I feel the same. How proud of your dad are you? Extremely, because he's everything I want to be, because he just sticks to, with everything he does, and he never gives up at anything. Every Saturday, I get to uh, listen to the national anthem and look at that flag and know it's a worthy cause and know that, uh, that there's people that have gone before me that have um, given me the freedoms, you know, to be a football coach, to um, be involved with, uh, you know, in something, a profession that I, I really love. And to be able to serve and give back to that is really a, an honor. Privateer is hoping to make this year's playoffs. The seeds will be announced this Sunday on ESPN News, Clayton Kendrick Holmes says he expects, at the very least, to be on the sidelines for that first game. ESPN Salute to Veterans continues all day Thursday. Josh Elliott, Hannah Storm host our coverage from Germany. Tune in Tuesday morning, 9 Eastern, for a special Veterans Day edition of SportsCenter. The Cliff Lee to the Yankees, not so fast. Might the Nationals swoop in and steal him away? Washington third baseman Ryan Zimmerman is on record saying Lee can have some of his salary if that'll get him to D.C. Well, Zimmerman is due to make nearly $9 million next season. That might cover Lee's cell phone bill. More realistic than the Lee family will be traveling to New York. Wednesday, the Yankees went to him at the invitation of his agent. Yanks GM Brian Cashman made the trip to Arkansas to meet with a 32-year-old lefty and his wife. The AP reporting this was merely a meet-and-greet kind of thing. No offer expected to be made until later. The Yanks have identified Lee as the top free agent they'd like to sign, of course, in addition to retaining their own named Jeter, Rivera, and Pettit. Hey, the Rawlings National League Gold Glove winners were announced, and Jeter got a National League Gold Glove as well. No, I'm just kidding. Three first-time winners, and two of them from Colorado, Carlos Gonzalez, Troy Tulowitzki, and Bronson Arroyo picked up their first awards. How about in left field, the 808? Now that's the uh, flying Hawaiian. I'm you got sure. that, bro. Albert Pujols picks up his second career Gold Glove, while Namir Molina wins his third straight. Got out of here. 
The great Northwest lost one of its greatest baseball people Wednesday when Seattle Mariner play-by-play -play man Dave Niehaus died of a heart attack. I'm calling the first Mariner game since the franchise's inception in 1977 to throwing out the first pitch at the new stadium, Niehaus was considered the face of the franchise. Baseball Hall of Fame recognized his major contributions with the Ford Frick Award in 2008. This from former Mariner All-Star Jay Buhner, who worked with Niehaus in the broadcast booth. Words can't describe what I am feeling right now. This is the saddest day of my life. It's like I'm losing a dad, someone that was a father figure to me. He was the voice of Northwest Baseball and the heart of the Mariners organization. Dave Niehaus, dead at 75. My, oh my. When Sports Center returns, we count down Wednesday's top plays. I'm placing a, a bounty on my brother's head. I think Rex is a great coach. I think he's a great person. Let me change back into my shout out, man. <laughs> Everything we've learned has come down to this. The next generation of MacBooks. With deposits in your engine, it can feel like something's holding your car back. Let me guess, 16. Yeah. That's why there's Castrol GTX. With our most powerful deposit fighting ingredient ever, Castrol GTX exceeds the toughest new industry standard. Don't let deposits hold your car back. Get Castrol GTX. It's more than just oil. It's liquid engineering. It's the preferred snack of tight ends, of linemen, of putting it on the linemen, and the men that watch them. Be a pro snacker with a handful of heart healthy California almonds. Oh. All right, calm down, baby. Let's do it. It's ball the winner. Winner, winner, chicken dinner! Oh! Yes! Sir! Thanks, guys. Yo, Mooch! Me? Oh, yeah, you, Charlie Cheapskate. I mean, when's the last time you bought the gang around a Coors Light Silver Bullets? I helped him move blah, 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 blah. I'm just, this is just disgraceful. Listen to me, buddy. Either the next round's on you, or I'm on you. Arr! Experience the cold activation of Coors Light. When the mountains turn blue, your beer is cold and ready for kickoff. Do you want a beer? Yeah, I want one. Just hold my gum, OK? Hey, Frost Brewed Coors Light, the world's most refreshing beer. Why is it that supposedly simple projects aren't, like this basketball hoop? Following these instructions would require three standard and two metric wrenches, or just one multi-drive. The heads of the multi-drive rotate, giving you eight sockets on one wrench, each innovatively designed to work on hex bolts, square bolts, and high precision bolts, even if they're rounded or damaged. You don't have to worry about if it's metric or not. It's all in one convenient place. So I've assembled toys, bikes, scooters. It's pretty common these days to run into unusual bolts, like a star or a spline. Multi-drive works on both of these, so you don't have to stop even when you run into a bolt you didn't expect. Buy your Cobalt Multi-Drive today for just $24.97 and use this one wrench for standard and metric sizes. Buy today and you'll also get a driver adapter, 12 driver bits, and a magnetic LED flashlight insert. Order right now, online or by phone, and you'll get 50 more driver bits absolutely free. With Cobalt Multi-Drive, you're ready for anything, at home or on the go. Exclusively at Lowe's. Sports Center, brought to you by Van Heusen at JCPenney. Vote for the Pro Football Hall of Fame at jcp.com slash fans choice. With two races remaining until the champion is crowned, Denny Hamlin takes a Sprint Cup lead of Phoenix Sunday, 3 Eastern ESPN. Coverage begins 2 Eastern with NASCAR Countdown. Rusty Wallace, how will Jimmy Johnson respond to being the chaser instead of the chase E?
We're used to seeing the Jimmy Johnson that's always leading the point standings. Now that he's 33 points behind, I think we're going to see a tiger. I think this guy's going to come out and attack big time. Look, we're going to go to Phoenix, Arizona, and that's a track where he's won at four times of the last six tries. So he's very, very fast right there. And going into Homestead, Florida, he really never had a run real hard. He's always protected his position. Now he can stand in the throttle and get it done. I think we're going to see a 48 team and a 48 driver of Jimmy Johnson flat get it on the next two races. Denny Hamlin sits in the points lead, two races left. The chase leader with two races to go has never failed to win the championship. For Jimmy Johnson, Phoenix is his best track statistically. His 4.9 career average finish at the track ranks the best of all time. That's nearly a fifth place average finish. Tune in at 3 Eastern, ESPN. The hanging Chad in South Florida most recently has been Chad Pennington. And Wednesday, he got the vote of his head coach, and this Sunday, he will start when the Dolphins host the Titans. Pennington replacing Chad Henney. It'll be Pennington's first start since week three of last season. The NFL saying there is no conclusive evidence that LaRon McClain spit in the face of Channing Crowder in last weekend's Dolphins-Ravens game. Crowder said McClain did it. McClain said he did spit, but it was an accident. Uh, former Brown Braylon Edwards, with no love for Cleveland fans, as his new team gets ready to visit his old team, says uh, uh, says now how he wanted to do a celebratory dance the day he got traded to the Jets, 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 Jets. So maybe public enemy number two, maybe behind only LeBron in Cleveland. Edwards tweeted, "All you Cleveland Browns fans, 17 is coming back, and you better bring your darn popcorn. Not that original with no. the popcorn thing. So it'll be up to Browns, Browns defensive coordinator Rob Ryan to keep Edwards in." Check on Sunday. You guys sit tight real quick. I had Bruce one one side. <laughs> All right, let's get down. <laughs> well, let's get down to business today. All right, now, first off, you know, I want to mention that, uh, you know, obviously, you know, my dad one time from the league, I guess there was some question about a certain bounty that he put on a player or something, and, and obviously that wasn't true. But uh, I'm saying there is a bounty this week, and I know I'm going to hear from the league and all that kind of stuff, but I'm placing a, a bounty on my brother's head. Uh, I do have some concerns. I have some concerns that uh, that some of our players may bounce off, to be honest with you. But uh, that notwithstanding, there, there is a bounty, and, you know, I know I'm going to hear about it from the league, but I'm just, you know, you know, I, I say the way it is, the, the truth, and, and that, that that is the truth. But uh, ready to go, ready to open it up for questions. <laughs> what we got? Anything Rob, Rob what do you think of your brother Rex? I, I think Rex is a great coach. I think he's a great person. You know, there's no question about that. It's just that he's very handsome. <laughs> All right, we good with this? Let me change back into my jet outfit. Notice they put that in because truly he is looking bad. He's about 290. He should have had the lap band. Did not have the lap band surgery when I did. Everybody funny. Now you funny too. Bud Light top plays. Here we go. At 10, we got two plays from Miami, Ohio, Bowling Green game. Matt Schiltz, Bowling Green pass off Calvin Wiley, intercepted by Dayon Nunley. If he was in the circus, he'd be a juggler. Keeps his feet in bounds. And how about with one second left, game tied, Trevor Cook in the fog. 33 yards. Miami, oh, wins. At number nine, Fordham basketball. The 1970-71 team had their 48th reunion. That's our digger Phelps. Their Rams team being honored in New York, they finished 26 and three, lost to Villanova regional semis of the NCAA tournament. All right, the Cougars at College of Charleston really uh, almost took it to Coach Williams in Maryland, thanks to plays like that by Jeremy Simmons. Maryland wins by one. At number seven, Louisiana Tech, Texas. Ashelou. Is it Air Canada? Oh. Make it official. Olu Ashalu. Oh man. <laughs> Texas a big winner in that. How about this, Steve? Soccer, Real Madrid, Murcia, Angel de Maria. The pass off the outside of his foot to Cristiano Ronaldo. Real, Ma Real Madrid win it 5-1. At number five, Venezuelan League Baseball. Luis Unda loses his footing 
and still able to make the lunging catch. That is phenomenal concentration, if not footwork. At four hockey, I'll take this. Bruins, Penguins, Mark Recchi, pass to Blake Wheeler. He visits the red light district. Recchi wins the battle near the board, Steve. That's where it all happens in, in the rink. And then feeds Wheeler as the Bruins win 7-4. Number three, Rockets and Wizards, Gilbert Arenas, Ali Oop, and a John Wall, so they can play together. How about that? Wall going up high and jamming Wall in case he didn't hear. He had his first triple double in his sixth NBA game. Nets, Cavs at two, Daniel Gibson, the Alley Oop from half court. Ryan Hollins, the former UCLA Bruin, he had hops for pregame. Let's stay right there for number one. J.J. Hickson driving and jamming over Chris Humphreys. How would you like to be Humphreys right about now? Not that good. Cavs get the dunks. They get the top play. They also get the loss. Nets got the win, 95-87. The Bud Light Top 10, brought to you by Bud Light. It's the sure sign of a good time. Here we go. Thursday, Kobe Bryant will likely set an NBA record. The first things first, the currently undefeated Lakers should have their hands full on this one. This is the police. What are your demands? Hey, 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 let's stall him. I just found some Bud Light in the back. Here we go. We demand a helicopter. Got it. Oh. We demand a hovercraft, a pipe organ, a Siberian endangered lynx, and my old high school track coach, Mr. Gill. Hey, guys. Oh, they're good. It's the sure sign of a good time. The just right taste of Bud Light. Here we go. Well, this is the number to the hideout. You just give me a call whenever, okay? Why didn't you come? You don't want to go. This Thanksgiving, that boy they killed is my brother. If you're on his list, I'm gonna kill you all. Then you're already dead. Dwayne Johnson. God can't save you from me. But maybe he can save you from yourself. Faster. The sermon's over. Read it all. Paterno leads the Nittany Lions into the horseshoe for the Buckeyes must win to stay in the Big Ten title race. College football presented by K Jewelers. Penn State, Ohio State, plus other regional action Saturday at 3.30 Eastern on ABC or ESPN. College football lives here. In the event of a collision, the smartest thing you could do is cut the fuel supply, unlock the doors, and turn on the hazard lights. Or better yet, get a car that automatically does it for you. Right now, during the Sign and Drive event, get the all-new 2011 Jetta for practically just your signature. You might have beaten me to Bristol, but there ain't no way you're getting to Dago for me. Driving mighty slow to be talking like that. Yeah? Well, do me a favor. Let me know how my taillights are working. Why is it that supposedly simple projects aren't, like this basketball hoop? Following these instructions would require three standard and two metric wrenches, or just one multi-drive. The heads of the multi-drive rotate, giving you eight sockets on one wrench, each innovatively designed to work on hex bolts, square bolts, and high precision bolts, even if they're rounded or damaged. You don't have to worry about if it's metric or not. It's all in one convenient place. So I've assembled toys, bikes, scooters. It's pretty common these days to run into unusual bolts, like a star or a spline. Multi-drive works on both of these, so you don't have to stop even when you run into a bolt you didn't expect. 
Buy your Cobalt Multi-Drive today for just $24.97 and use this one wrench for standard and metric sizes. Buy today and you'll also get a driver adapter, 12 driver bits, and a magnetic LED flashlight insert. Order right now, online or by phone, and you'll get 50 more driver bits absolutely free. With Cobalt Multi-Drive, you're ready for anything, at home or on the go. Exclusively at Lowe's. To College Park, where Maryland had all sorts of problems. The College of Charleston and the Coaches versus Cancer Clinic. So a Jordan Williams, name of the ACC All-Rookie Team. Williams taking the pass and finishing with the jam. Tied at 46 second half. Williams another dunk. He had 26 points and 15 rebounds. Charleston down three. Andrew Galdlock. He's got radar lock. Tied at 55. Charleston's not going anywhere. Donovan Monroe to Gadlock for three. Gadlock with 27. Charleston's up. This game was, if I mention it, College Park, Maryland. In College Park, Pashawn Howard. Say hi to the true freshman. Big jumper. Now down two. Howard on the dribble. Steps back. Knocks down a jumper. Clutch. 4.6 seconds left in his second career collegiate game. Kid only missed one shot. Six to seven for the four, from the floor. And then Gadlock misses is the running three at the buzzer. Maryland held Charleston without a field goal. A final eight minutes to win by one. What to watch for coming up tomorrow. The Lakers and the Nuggets in Denver. Kobe 17 points shy at 26,000. He'd become the 12th player and the youngest in NBA history to reach the milestone. Nuggets took three or four from the Lakers last year. Carmelo was uh, nine and thirteen head to head against Kobe. You know, if that game was home, it'd right. be right across the street we here in Los Angeles. Go to it. I think Rex is a great coach. I think he's a great person. It's just uh, and he's very handsome. <laughs> this is. Center. Fresh off burn in the heat, the Jazz make NBA history. Dialed in John Wall with a career first, and a former Nick shines back in the big city. Auburn continues to defend its Heisman hopeful. Meanwhile, Mississippi State officials confirm they notified the proper authorities. I have my own beliefs in what I believed in, and Coach had his. On the field with the Titans, Randy Moss not making any apologies. In Minnesota, several Vikings bash Brad Childress. And the post-Wade Phillips era officially underway. New guy already talking tough. Sports Center, right now. It's business. It's time to get to work. Sports Center, and not from Albuquerque, New Mexico. <laughs> this is Los Angeles with Neil Everett. I'm Steve Levy. The Jets are back to feeling good about themselves, as evidenced by Rex Ryan's latest news conference. And what's wrong with Tom Brady? We'll have all the NFL in a bit, but first, the night in the NBA. Utah with more come from behind magic. Tall order for the Jazz in Orlando after Tuesday's overtime win at Miami. Dunk you. Paul Millsap with a career high 46 in that one. Hunter, oh, here we go. Final seconds, first quarter, ball movement. Vince Carter, three. Magic by one after one. Carter had 20 points. Let's go second quarter. Darren Williams drives. Dwight Howard with the block. Looks like Clay Stanley there with the volleyball spike. Howard had three blocks, 14 points. Final seconds before the half, Richard Lewis hits the three. Utah just 13 second quarter points. Magic led by 10 at the half. Bartender, how about a bass? Brandon Bass with the dunk and then Vince Carter with the dunk and then after Carter we'll go back to Bass magic lead by as many as 18 in the third quarter and Orlando coach Stan Van Gundy he's all jazz the last minute there our energy picked up first two minutes we looked like we were the team who played last night coach talking about Tuesday night when the jazz overcame a 22 point deficit to beat the heat in OT Remember that? Watch this. Fourth quarter, Williams, three. It's a one-point game. Williams, the double team. Andre Kirilenko almost cut my hair. Magic getting buzz cut. They're behind. Williams, another three, please. We're tied. Now Jazz up three. Williams off the screen. Millsap down low. He had 23 and five rebounds. And then Williams, 30 points, 14 assists. 
Jazz go on to win 104 to 94. Ridiculous professional basketball was Coach Van Gundy's thought afterwards. Ridiculous. How about the, the Utah is jazz donkulous with what they're doing. <laughs> First team in the shot clock era. That's 50 plus years to win three consecutive games after trailing by 10 or more at the half of each one. It began Saturday. They trailed the Clippers by 18, one in Dovo overtime. Tuesday trailed the Heat by 22. Millsap goes three for three from three. This is a guy who made two his entire career. They win by two in overtime. And then Wednesday down 18 in the second half in Orlando. Jazz outscored the Magic 39 to 20 in the fourth quarter, and they win by 10. All right, fair to say John Wall has arrived. Wall put on a show besides showing he can dance for 31 seconds as the Wizards hooked up with the Rockets on the break wall for JaVale McGee. Wizards had an early 9 2 lead. Kid looks like he's worth the price of admission that at the other end. Yao Ming had some issues. First quarter, Rockets trailing by three. Watch Yao underneath. Andre Blatch misses the layup. McGee going for the rebound, knocks Yao down. Yao drawing the offensive foul. Again, he's slow to get off. Watch him walk off the court. They want to keep his minutes to 24 minutes or less, right? Well, you see him grimace there in pain. How about six minutes? That's all he played in this one. He leave with a tendon strain, did not return. Under 40 seconds go in the first quarter. Blatch hits Wall, and Wall takes it to the tin, to the cup. Wizards take a nine-point lead. Second quarter on the break. Gilbert Arenas makes the highlight. Up for Wall, who throws it down. Nice assist by Arenas to Wall. Wizards an 11-point lead out of the fourth. It's only a three-point game here. Some more good ball movement by Washington. And eventually Wall hits the three from the wing, showing the outside shot. Wizards now down one. Wall gets the rebound off the Kevin Martin miss. He'll find Al Thornton. Wall has 61 assists in his first six NBA games. That's a new NBA record all time. Big O had 60. Under four minutes to go in the fourth. Wizards up three. Wall able to poke it away from Luis Scola starting the break. Finds Andre Blatch. Triple double time for Wall, and he does it with Magic in the house, who had to be impressed. The Wizards, as a bonus, they even win the basketball game. And we have wall to wall coverage. John Wall turns his first career triple double, the fourth youngest to do so in NBA history at 20 years, 65 days old. Does it in just his sixth career NBA game. Only four players did it faster, three of which are in the Basketball Hall of Fame. We mentioned the Big O, we mentioned Magic. Don't forget about Connie Hawkins. Clippers haven't beaten the Spurs since the Millard Fillmore administration. 17 straight, that's a heavy weight to shake. Can they shake it? Longest active win streak for one team over another. Clippers haven't won in San Antonio uh, end of January 2002. Spurs were plus seven at the half. Third quarter, Tony Parker baseline reverse lay-in. And then Tony Parker to Richard Jefferson. Spurs were 11 of 18 from three. Parker had 21 points, nine assists. Jefferson had 22 points. So did Manu Ginobili as we go to the fourth quarter. And the Spurs in control over Blake Griffin there. The Clips are going to fall to 1-8. and eight. How about a Griffin highlight? Been averaging a double-double, 17-10. and 10. 11 and 11-8 in this one. Gets high there, but shoots just 5 of 18 from the field. There was an Antonio McDice sighting. The Clippers unsightly against the Spurs. Streak now at 18 straight, 107-95. Your final, the Spurs own the Clippers. It's the longest active streak of one team versus another 18 straight. Coach Popovich has the highest win percentage versus the Clippers of any coach in history. Well, ever since the NFL-AFL merger, Tom Brady's been listed on the Patriots injury report, shoulder probable. It's as reliable as he is. But on this Wednesday, those words had unexpected company, foot, DNP, as in did not practice. Now, that's news. Boston Globe said it was a sprain not expected to keep him out of Sunday night's game in Pittsburgh. This was the first practice Brady has missed all season. He still held his regularly scheduled news conference, but wasn't asked about the injuries. As for any pain he's feeling, Brady said he and his teammates got a well-deserved beating from head coach Bill Belichick the last couple of days. Other than the knee injury that cost Brady the entire 2008 season, he has never missed a start due to injury over the course of his brilliant career. 
And along those lines, since Tom Brady made that first NFL start in 2001, he's played in 135 games, third most among active quarterbacks. But again, keep in mind, he missed those 15 games in 2008. Otherwise, he'd be at the very top of the list. The Patriots' backup quarterback is Brian Hoyer. He's only attempted two passes this year, 27 total in his career with New England. Was there a fumble after the catch in the Cam Newton recruitment case? Mississippi State saying it notified the Southeastern Conference in January. The SEC followed up with a request for more specifics. The school did not respond to that request until July. At issue, allegations that Newton, his father, and or people who said they represented the Newton family asked for financial aid that violated NCAA rules. The family has denied any wrongdoing. So has the university that eventually landed the quarterback, Auburn. I want to get off the uh, table uh, up front uh, the fact that Cameron Newton will be playing Saturday against the Georgia Bulldogs, uh, and I want to get that off the table. If there is anybody that has any questions that relate to uh, this game Saturday, uh, I'd love to entertain those questions only. Thank you. Auburn and Georgia this weekend with the Tigers looking to remain perfect and on the path to the BCS title game. Newton's path to Auburn began at Florida. His attraction to Mississippi State after leaving the Gators and attending a JUCO, reportedly fueled by his relationship with current Bulldog coach Dan Mullen, a former Florida assistant. I'm a big fan of Cam Newton. Uh, you know, he played for me for two years at Florida and, and uh, was very close to him and his family. And, you know, I mean, as far as that stuff went, I, we kind of finished, wrapped up with that last December when he decided not to come here. So, uh, you know, for me, I, that's about as much as we've thought about it. People that are saying they're associated with your program as recruiters are, are saying that this kid had his hand out. You're the guy who's, who's got the job that would know better than anybody. And the people that need to know all, all the facts know what happened. And, and I'll leave it at that. You know, I mean, that, that's the, the people that, that needed stuff reported to them got stuff reported to them uh, as far as we're concerned. As for Newton's Heisman chances, the apparent frontrunner is already running into opposition thanks to the current controversy. One Heisman voter saying, quote, at this point... I can't envision voting for him. One Reggie Bush tainting the Heisman is enough. After Sunday's overtime win, you'd think the Vikings would be in a good mood. Instead, players are going after their head coach. One even used the word hate. Hate's an ugly word. And both Kevin Durant and Russell Westbrook with 30-plus, including clutch buckets late. And David Lee welcomes himself back to the Garden with a season high. So, how do you feel? Night tonight, my night. Get in, get confident. Super cuts every time. It's time for the Bud Light Playbook. Today, how to avoid a costly fumble. Yeah, well, I blew out my knee. Did you? Nice save. I use that sticky stuff that receivers used to use. Now I'll never drop my Bud Light. Here we go. I just got this new car. <laughs> hey, man. Bud Light, the sure sign of a good time. Here we go. $15.99 doesn't get you much at other restaurants. But at Dave & Buster's, $15.99 gets you the eat and play combo. Get a $10 game card and your choice of eight delicious entrees. Why just eat when you can eat and play at Dave & Buster's? Three, two, one, lift Let's off. do it. Oh. That boy they killed is my brother. I'm gonna kill them all. If you're on his list, then you're already dead. God can't save you from me. Faster. Rated R starts November 24th. Jack Link's Beef Jerky presents Messing with Sasquatch. Here you go. Hey, big guy. You want to play with us? I'm going to put this ball right here, and you're going to give it a big old kick. Come on. <laughs> 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 
Jack Link's Jerky. Feed your wild side. Turns to the swamp where the Gamecocks and Gators rumble for a spot in the SEC championship game. ESPN College Football Primetime presented by Hampton Hotels. South Carolina, Florida, Saturday at 7.15 Eastern on ESPN. College football lives here. Sports Center from Los Angeles. Brought to you by Dave and Busters. Escape into play. You know, I like big bucks, and I cannot lie. Milwaukee would like to have their first winning streak of the season. Second quarter. Taking on the Hawks. Jamal Crawford feeding, feeding Zsa Pachulia, and he throws it down over John Brockman. And what are you going to do about that? Nothing. Ersan Ilasova and Corey McGetty, though, would lead the Bucks back. Ilasova on the drive finishes at the rim. Bucks were down one. Bucks down one here, too. McGetty running right the floor. Acrobatic lay in. Bucks up one. Here's Ilya Sova now. Jump shot over Al Horford. How do you like me now? Bucks up 38 32. And then McGetty spotting up and knocking down the three. McGetty and Ilya Sova combined for 25 points in the first half on 9 of 12 shooting. McGetty and his fellow reserves outscored Atlanta's backups 35 6 in that first half. That's Brandon Jennings. And then Jennings and the foul. He'd hit the free throw for the four point play. And a minute left. Bucks up 27. Jennings again for three. Bucks have won three of their last four. What happened to the Hawks? Al Horford said afterwards, it's hard to explain. I don't understand what happened. Forecast calls for Thunder, Oklahoma City, hosting Philadelphia. Uh, Kevin Durant, he's going to get the ball above the arc here. Now, he's averaging about 28 points per game. All right. Uh, Tebo Cephalosha averaging oh, about three points per game. The Sixers have two defenders on Durant. <laughs> and then they go and chase Cephalosha, and Durant says, thank you very much. He had 11 points in the first quarter. Uh, not the defensive plan that Coach Collins drew up there. Russell Westbrook throws it to Durant. He throws it down. Thunder led by eight at the half. Now, Durant shooting under 40% on the season. Oh, go save our Sonics right there. And one. He went 16 of 16 from the free throw line. 7 of 18 in this game. 31 points, 7 rebounds. Westbrook and the foul. Use the Durant screen there. He's going to get his fifth double-double. Weaving through three defenders there. 31 points, 12 assists. Thunder win 109-103. It's just their second home win this young season. The triumphant return of David Lee to New York. Seriously. Lee said his Golden State Warriors are the first winning team he's been on since college. Lee had 28 points, 10 rebounds, 11 of 17 shooting, six double-double in the last eight games. Wilson Chandler for the alley of David Lee, the rebound. Lee's elbow finds Chandler's mouth. So Chandler's in pain. Watch it again. Chandler takes the huge hit to the face from Lee. Actually breaks, breaks off the front tooth. Oh, the Rangers, who also play at Madison Square Garden, would appreciate it. They got to check David Lee's arm. Now they're looking for the chiclet, busted chiclet. The tooth was in Chandler's mouth the whole time. And now, as you can see, it's, it's no longer in his mouth. It might be on that garden floor. The crew looking for that. Fourth quarter, Knicks down 10. Here's Chandler. He's tough. He's an NBA player. Knicks down seven. Under four minutes left. Amari Stoudemire here. Mike D'Antoni changes starting lineup. Moves Stoudemire to center. Basket in the foul. Stoudemire hit the freebie. It's a two-point game. Ellis, the dish to Darrell Wright. Warriors regain the lead. 114-113. Out of a timeout. 16 ticks left. Knicks in the inbound. Stoudemire from three. Top shot. One-point game. After Ellis makes two free throws, under 10 to play. Here's Chandler coming down for the tie. No, back iron off the tough look. Warriors 6-2, and two, their best start since the 94-95 season. Brad Childress has said he can say whatever he wants to his players by virtue of being their head coach. Clearly some of what he has said has left those players wanting. Now some of those Vikings are saying whatever they want. And it can't be what Childress wants to hear. We know that 
Brad Childress doesn't have our back, so why should we have his? We're playing for us, and we're winning despite him. This is what they told the Chicago Sun-Times uh, beat writer for the Bears, who used to be the beat writer for the Vikings. Six of them chiming in here. Six of them say they want him fired. Uh, one of them saying, we've got too many good football players, and we won't lay down like Dallas. And then the four-letter word, as much as I hate Childress, I will keep playing. Percy Harvin has had his moments with the coach. His battle this week is with another migraine headache. Childress saying Harvin did not practice Wednesday. Harvin coming off a career Sunday. Nine catches, 126 yards, and the Vikings win over the Cardinals. Randy Moss can make history with his 154th career touchdown catch. You see, he'd be the first NFL player to ever have a scoring grab for three different teams in one season. Not necessarily a compliment, but it is history nonetheless. Now, no drafted Moss giving him the full fresh start treatment. Moss is listed as a starter for Sunday's contest in Miami. As Bob Holtzman reports, the Titans appear to be having a good time with this whole thing. Randy Moss's entrance to his third team in five weeks was one of the few lighthearted moments of his tumultuous season because eight minutes before Moss took the field, rookie safety Robert Johnson beat him to it, dressed in a number 84 jersey and with Moss's trademark gloves attached to his face mask. You know, I seen all y'all standing out there and I just was coming to a, uh, a thought like, I kind of look like Moss, I could probably pull it off. And it kind of worked a little bit, I guess. You know, I guess y'all interviewing me now. <laughs> The real Moss spent a lot of time asking questions at practice and very little time answering them afterward. He spoke to reporters for three minutes, said he doesn't think he single-handedly makes the Titans a Super Bowl team, and sounded ready to turn the page on what happened in Minnesota. You know, it just didn't work out. You know, just I had my own beliefs and what I believed in, and Coach had his. So, you know, am I bitter or mad that he let me go in the organization? No. You never know what the future holds. But right now, I'm a Tennessee Titan. I'm here to do whatever Coach Fisher wants me to do. You know, to all my critics, you know, you wouldn't be critics. You got to get paid to talk negative. So, uh, you know, I look forward to just coming out here and just helping this team do whatever I can and whatever my role is, is what I'm going to do. The biggest question at this point is who will be throwing Moss the ball on Sunday? Quarterback Vince Young didn't practice Wednesday because of a sore ankle, but head coach Jeff Fisher said he's hopeful Young will be on the practice field on Thursday. In Nashville, Bob Holtzman, ESPN. Randy Moss has had success, especially in his many team debuts throughout his career. In his four previous debuts, he's recorded at least 80 yards receiving and caught a touchdown in every single game. Something for him to look forward to when his Titans visit the Dolphins on Sunday. Moss has 10 career touchdowns versus the Finns. 30 years in prison for Dave Meggett. South Carolina jury taking less than five hours to convict the former NFL player of criminal sexual conduct and burglary Wednesday. Meggett's attorney said his client will appeal. Meggett was a Super Bowl champion and two-time Pro Bowler in his 10 NFL seasons. Still ahead on Sports Center, we check in on the Cowboys. Some folks say this team lacks discipline. Wednesday, Jason Garrett already changing things up. And in honor of Veterans Day, a story of one man's commitment to his country and his family, not to mention his undefeated football team. You guys have been incredible, all right? Great job. I've done it for you too, all right? ESPN salutes America's heroes in celebration of Veterans Day. Join us all week as we honor our armed forces with special tributes on SportsCenter, Mike and Mike, and more. This week on ESPN. Everything we've learned has come down to this. the next generation of MacBooks. You know, as a mom, I worry about my son playing football, which is why I'm really excited, because Toyota developed this software that can simulate head injuries and helps make people safer. Then they shared this technology with researchers at Wake Forest to help reduce head injuries on the football field. So, you know, I can right. feel a bit better about my yeah, son playing football. Go, 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 go. 
How would you use Toyota technology to make a better world? Learn how to share your ideas at toyota.com slash ideas for good. It's the choice of Iron Men, of Olympians, professional athletes, and these guys. Be a pro snacker with a handful of heart-healthy California almonds. At Match.com, we know that what you don't have in common... I graduated college with a 4.0. You did? ...can be as attractive as what you do. Awesome. Wow, I did not. <laughs> <laughs> Match.com. More dates, more relationships, and more marriages than any other site. Start for free. Week 10, Eagles Redskins. Donovan McNabb gets another shot at his old team. But he'll be up against Michael Vick. This is going to be one great rematch. ESPN Monday Night Football. Eagles Redskins at 8.30. Stop your tax debt from spinning out of control. Pinnacle Tax has saved thousands of clients millions in tax debt, like Frank B., who saved 30000 or Marla H., who saved 69000 and Paul N. saved 192000 If you owe the IRS or state more than 10000 or have unfiled returns, penalties and interest increase your tax debt every day, just like a credit card. Take advantage of new 2010 tax relief programs to dramatically settle your tax debt. Like Vincent G., who had his garnishment stopped and saved 30000 Or William E., who saved 144000 And Carrie D. had her returns filed and saved 297000 If you owe more than 10000 in tax debt or have unfiled returns, our legal team can stop levies, eliminate penalties, settle payroll tax, file returns, and get you a fresh start. Penny S. saved $3.5 million after hiring Pinnacle Tax. Call us today. This Sports Center telecast is brought to you in high definition by Vizio. I think Rex is a great coach. I think he's a great person. There's a new sheriff in town, and it wasn't that guy with the bad hair. If Dallas is your town and the Cowboys are your team. Jason Garrett has exactly eight games to prove he's an NFL head coach. So he has no time for players playing dominoes in the locker room and standing around on the practice field. As Ed Werder reports, boys will be boys no more. The first Cowboys team in history to get its coach fired during the season was punished accordingly. Jason Garrett marked his debut as interim head coach Wednesday making the players report half an hour earlier than normal, conducting the first full pad practice since training camp, and warning players that walking through drills would no longer be tolerated. It's business. It's time to get to work. You know, we're in the middle of a transition, in the middle of a season. That's different for a lot of people, but let's get to work. Well, Jason just is a little more stays on you, you know, and make sure there's nobody walking and, and anything like that, even if you're, you're just heading to the sideline. Um, just, just a little more... At, at attention, I guess. Wade Phillips refused to publicly criticize his players and was reluctant to bench starters who underachieved. Garrett wouldn't discuss potential lineup changes, but delivered the message that players will get exactly what they earn, regardless of who they are. We talk very strongly about how we evaluate players. It doesn't matter where players come from, whether they're Pro Bowl players, drafted players, or undrafted free agents. We're going to play the best guys. A lot of times with guaranteed money and things like that, there's only so much a coaching staff can do. There's only so much a personnel department can do. But, you know, eventually, sooner than later, we're all going to be held accountable for the season that we're having right now. So, um, you know, if you're not looking at it that way, you need to look at it that way because that's just the reality of this business. That's the way this league works. Although a consummate professional, Keith Brooking should have been one of the most difficult players for Garrett to convert. He played for Phillips in Atlanta, and the coach extended his career as a starter here. But even Brooking embraced Garrett's message, saying, quote, I believe in Jason Garrett. For the Cowboys, I'm Ed Werder, ESPN. Cowboys are off to their worst start since beginning the 89 season 0-8. Three major factors for the fall, points allowed, penalties, and giveaways. Dallas, 232 points allowed through the first eight games, second most in team history. Mavs in Memphis, Dallas lost Dirk in this one to injury, but he would return. Second quarter, Nowitzki putting the move on Mark Gasol, gets by him for the layup. The Mavs had a nine-point lead. Mavs up six, keep an eye on Dirk. Mike Conley Jr. now driving. He's gonna miss the floater, but Dirk goes down on the play. 
Back behind the play, you see Nowitzki rolling around in obvious pain, holding the right ankle. Dirk would leave the game before halftime to get it checked out. Third quarter, everybody relax. Dirk is back, and he looks just fine to me. Dirk finished with 12.10 rebounds in 29 minutes. Mavs up 15. Jason Terry loved the bounce pass. Sean Marion on the jam. Marion finished with 20 points. Mavs up 17. Jason Kidd driving, throwing back to Tyson Chandler. Mavs up big. They go on to win big, 106 to 91. Nets brought their five-game losing streak with them to Cleveland, included in that five-game streak. They lost Tuesday night at home to Cleveland. Devin Harris pumped. Daniel Gibson went by him, and Harris hit the leaner. Closing seconds of the third quarter. Nets down five. Harris fakes the three, and then over to Anthony Morrow for the three. Morrow had 21. Let's go fourth quarter. Cleveland down one. J.J. Hickson, who has looked so good early in the season. Oh, man. Chris Humphreys. They're taking another look, and that's uh, facial. And it's a TPN. That's top play nominee, Stu, uh, uh, Steve. Call me Steve. Program. I will. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> four minutes left. Jordan Farmar fights Humphreys. Humphreys, 13 points, 18 rebounds. Harris here, though. Less than a minute to go. Nets up by three. Pass Anderson Varejo. Harris had 31. Nets win. Cavs lose the game. And Mo Williams to a groin injury. Timberwolves look so good in Los Angeles. Fell just shy against the Lakers, trying to take on the Sacramento Kings. It's my man B. Easy getting it going. Third quarter, gets the ball from Kevin Love. Timberwolves up 58-53. And then Beasley off the inbounds, hits the jumper from the corner, tied at 64. It's the B-Easy highlight. Driving the lane up and in. Timberwolves up 74-70. Up four in the fourth. Beasley again. They can't stop him. Career night for Michael Beasley. Finishes with 42. And oh, by the way, the Timberwolves win their second game of the season. Moving on to Sports Center right now. A couple of highlights for you here. The Jazz and the Magic. Darren Williams three ties things at 84. Here in the fourth quarter, just moments later, Jazz up three. Williams to Paul Millsap off that genius game. Jazz by five. Under a minute to play. Williams, the jumper. He had 30. Utah's the first team in the shot clock era to win three consecutive games after trailing by 10 or more at the half in each one. And now it's the John Wall Show. John Wall, the alley-oop to JaVale McGee there. Second quarter, Gilbert Arenas. How do you like that setup? Respect from the veteran to the rookie. And in the fourth quarter, with the Wizards up three, Wall finds Andre Blatch. Wall, a triple-double. Not bad in this sixth NBA game of his career. Where's Stan? Oh, he's getting ready to watch Thursday this game in Miami. Celtics in heat. The Heat want revenge after losing to Boston in the season opener. LeBron James, just a shade under 31 points per game against Boston. That's the highest average against the Celtics in NBA history. What to watch for? Brought to you by new Garnier Fruit Teas, anti-dandruff shampoo, controls flakes for 48 hours, guaranteed. It was a college football Wednesday on ESPN2, Miami, Ohio, and Bowling Green. This one came down to the game's final play, but before we go there, let's go to the 06 Mud Bowl between these two. Miami won 9-7 after the Bowling Green kicker slipped, missed a field goal at the end of regulation. Let's snap back to reality. Just over two minutes left, tied at 21. Matt Schilt's pass intercepted by DJ Brown. Officials would review it. They're not blinded by the light here. They're blinded by the fog. Did that ball hit the ground? Hard to overrule. Play stands. Miami gets the ball. One second left. Trevor Cook, are you going to slip, dude? No, I'm the dude. The dude abides. Field goal good. Miami, 24-21. Red Hawks now bowl eligible. College football on ESPN and ESPN2 this week. Pitt Panthers have their eyes on the BCS. They're going to score off of UConn Thursday, 7.30 Eastern on ESPN. Then Friday at 9 p.m. Eastern, 7 in Idaho on ESPN2. Killing more. Boise State against Idaho. Wild affair on Pittsburgh ice. Slots of black and gold. The Bruins and the Penguins. Second period. Penguins up 3-2. Power play with Sidney Crosby. There's Sidney Crosby. Beats Tim Thomas. Watch it again. The puck actually goes in off the defenseman. Mark Stewart off his stick. That put Pittsburgh up 4-2. 
And you got to think they're going away. They're up, they're up 4 2. But now it's 4 3. Zedano Chara, the big man in the middle, scores. Beats Brent Johnson there. The Bruins tied at four. Here's Sean Thornton starting the two on one. The Bruins heavyweight. Oh, yeah, I think I'll shoot that. I think I'll score. Roops it off the crossbar. The Bruins come all the way back to blow out Pittsburgh 7 to 4. Hottest team in the NHL. St. Louis Blues visiting the Blue Jackets. Could be confusing. You see the Blues, they don't give up any goals. Six goals total during that seven game winning streak. Uh, they gave up some goals here. Jakob Voracek, the breakaway, beats Yaroslav Halak. And the Blue Jackets had a 1 0 lead. It's Voracek, another breakaway here in the second. This time scores on the backhand. Voracek had two goals. It's 4 0. What's up with the Blues? Actually, what's up with the Blue Jackets? That would be it for Halak, who's pulled for the game. Ty Conklin given a chance to try and stop the Blue Jackets. Chris Clark, nice move and scores. Clark had two goals. Blue Jackets a 5 1 lead. And then later, Nikita Filatov, RJ Umberger scores in the one timer. It's 6 1. Oh, yeah, there's more. Columbus, RJ Umberger takes another shot. And Antoine Vermette is there. Again, the Blues, who hadn't been giving up any goals to anybody, give up eight to the Blue Jackets. Oh, beats the horn with a three. Williams oh, has it yes. swatted away. Oh. Knocks it down again. Oh, man. What a night for Darren Williams. And what a game in Orlando. At least one of those had to make Wednesday's top plays. Not making our short list, Rex Ryan in a wig. Not a good look. Uh, plus, Tiger Woods playing in the last tournament. He actually won. That was about a year ago. Seems like old times because Tiger is in the hunt. Watch ESPN Live Online. Find out how at ESPNNetworks.com. Check this thing out. I have an expected father and a gunshot victim. Which way? I'm your husband's best friend. Now, let's get that baby out of your... Due date, rated R. If you live for performance, upgrade to Castrol Edge Advanced Synthetic Oil. With eight times better wear protection than Mobile One, Castrol Edge. It's more than just oil. It's liquid engineering. There are those who dedicate themselves to a sense of honor, to a life of courage, and a commitment to something greater than themselves. They have always defended this nation and each other. They still do. The few the proud, the Marines. On Blu-ray and DVD. I hope that car never gets fixed. I don't think it will. It took the spark plugs out. Nice. You know they put a chemical in the pool that turns urine blue. It's an old wives' tale, sweetie. Oh, my God! Grown-ups on Blu-ray and DVD. And the AC's still broken. Feels like the Earth's core down here. Guys, the answer's right in front of you. Dick Buckus, what are you talking about? I'm talking about that cold, activated Coors Light. Hey, Brainiacs, that AC even plugged in? Come on, trade me to another basement. Experience the cold activation of Coors Light. When the mountains turn blue, your beer is cold and ready for kickoff. Staring contest on three. I blinked. Frost Brew Coors Light, the world's most refreshing beer. Hi, I'm Reese Davis. This year, there's a new award for supremacy in college sports as schools, student athletes, and fans join the quest for ultimate bragging rights. The Capital One Cup will be awarded to the best Division I men's and women's athletics programs for their on-field performance throughout the year. Schools will earn points based on their team's finishes in NCAA Division I championships and final official coaches polls. The journey for the Capital One Cup begins this fall. To learn more, go to CapitalOneCup.com. Joe Paterno leads the Nittany Lions into the horseshoe to battle the Buckeyes. Penn State, Ohio State. Saturday at 3.30 on ABC or ESPN. Tiger Woods back to defend his title at the Australian Masters. He won here last year. That was 12 days before the car accident that changed his life forever. 
Tiger on the fourth hole. Beautiful shot. That bounces just a few feet from the hole. And then Woods for birdie. Shoots and scores. Woods would go to two under. Ninth hole, here's Tiger for par. And he would sink that. Woods missed only two greens in regulation. He'd remain at two under. He is four strokes back of three players you see there. I'm an American soldier. Yo, how you doing, man? I'm LeBron James, and I want to say thanks to all the troops for what you do. You guys are the real heroes. You guys see me, and you guys see other guys in our sport, and other guys across the sports are always on TV. But without you guys, we wouldn't be able to do what we do. And ladies. So um, thanks, and um, happy Veterans Day. It's not often that a Division Three football team has a presence on this show. Uh, then again, it's not often that you meet a man with a resume like that of the head football coach of D3 SUNY Maritime Privateers. He says it's an honor to be their coach. With Thursday being Veterans Day, we say it's an honor to honor him. Here's Greg Garber. Maritime College, State University of New York, where military service is not mandatory, but three quarters of the students are members of the school's regiment of cadets. Last Saturday, the football team finished the regular season 10-0. Touchdown, privateers! By far the best record in school history. The privateers' motto is Warface. Each letter of that word stands for a value that comprises the foundation of this team. I think it's the biggest one, family. This year, I really feel most like in a family. The head of that family is coach Clayton Kendrick Holmes, who developed the war face. He is a lieutenant commander in the Naval Reserve. You don't coach football from nine to five. You live football. Here we go, punt block, punt block. The same thing as a naval reservist. You don't do it one weekend a month. You live it. Oh, screw it, screw it. Kendrick Holmes played linebacker at the Naval Academy. Then, after serving three years on a ship, decided coaching was his calling. Boom, got it. Right there, nice job. Nice. In 2005, he restarted a program that hadn't played a game for 16 seasons. I'm very proud of where we're at right now. I think it's just a, a compilation of a lot of hard work and just continually trying to do things the right way and take care of your people. Back in July, Kendrick Holmes was planning the team's preseason schedule when he got a phone call from the Navy that he was to be recalled to active duty to serve in Afghanistan. It's a call that you're honored to receive, um, and it's something that you have planned for and now it's time to spring into action. You guys have been incredible, you, all coach. right? It's Woo! been a great job. Yeah. 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 I've done it for you too, all right? I've done it for you, and this, we've all done it together. As the privateers look forward to the NCAA Division III postseason, they do so knowing if they advance in the playoffs, they may be without their coach. His training and deployment could come at any time. It's much like we tell our players when, if somebody gets hurt, we haven't designed the program around one person. And so when, you know, it's kind of like next man up for the head coach. In addition to leaving his on-field family, Kendrick Holmes will be separated from his wife and two boys, nine-year-old Wills and 12-year-old Bo. I'm looking forward to when he comes back, but it, it's never really occurred to me that he won't come back. I don't think the boys would ever wonder because dad's always taking care of them. You know, that he's, he's always been there. They know that he loves them and that, um, and I feel the same. How proud of your dad are you? Extremely, because he's everything I want to be, because he just sticks to, with everything he does, and he never gives up at anything. Every Saturday, I get to uh, listen to the national anthem and look at that flag. and. I know it's a worthy cause and know that, uh, that there's people that have gone before me that have um, given me the freedoms, you know, to be a football coach, to um, be involved with, uh, you know, in something, a profession that I, I really love. And to be able to serve and give back to that is really a, an honor.
Privateer is hoping to make this year's playoffs. The seeds will be announced this Sunday on ESPN News. Clayton Kendrick Holmes says he expects, at the very least, to be on the sidelines for that first game. ESPN Salute to Veterans continues all day Thursday. Josh Elliott, Hannah Storm host our coverage from Germany. Tune in Thursday morning at 9 Eastern for a special Veterans Day edition of SportsCenter. The Cliff lead of the Yankees, not so fast. Might the Nationals swoop in and steal him away? Washington third baseman Ryan Zimmerman is on record saying Lee can have some of his salary if that'll get him to D.C. Well, Zimmerman is due to make nearly $9 million next season. That might cover Lee's cell phone bill. More realistic than the Lee family will be traveling to New York. Wednesday, the Yankees went to him at the invitation of his agent. Yanks GM Brian Cashman made the trip to Arkansas to meet with a 32-year-old lefty and his wife. The AP reporting this was merely a meet-and-greet kind of thing. No offer expected to be made until later. The Yanks have identified Lee as the top free agent they'd like to sign, of course, in addition to retaining their own named Jeter, Rivera, and Pettit. Hey, the Rawlings National League Gold Glove winners were announced, and Jeter got a National League Gold Glove as well. No, I'm just kidding. Three first-time winners, and two of them from Colorado, Carlos Gonzalez, Troy Tulowitzki, and Bronson Arroyo picked up their first awards. How about in left field, the 808? That's the uh, flying Hawaiian. I you think. got that, bro. Albert Pujols picks up his second career Gold Glove, while Name Your Molina wins his third straight. Got here. The Great Northwest lost one of its greatest baseball people Wednesday when Seattle Mariner play-by-play -play man Dave Niehaus died of a heart attack. I'm calling the first Mariner game since the franchise's inception in 1977 to throwing out the first pitch at the new stadium, Niehaus was considered the face of the franchise. Baseball Hall of Fame recognized his major contributions with the Ford Frick Award in 2008. This from former Mariner All-Star Jay Buhner, who worked with Niehaus in the broadcast booth. Words can't describe what I am feeling right now. This is the saddest day of my life. It's like I'm losing a dad, someone that was a father figure to me. He was the voice of Northwest Baseball and the heart of the Mariners organization. Dave Niehaus, dead at 75. My, oh my. When SportsCenter returns, we count down Wednesday's top plays. I'm placing a, a bounty on my brother's head. I think Rex is a great coach. I think he's a great person. Let me change back into the shout out, man. <laughs> Countdown, baby. Let's do it. It's ball the winner. Winner, winner, chicken dinner! Oh! <laughs> yes, sir! So you think you can stop me and spin my eyes? So you think you can love me? Band 3, now featuring keyboards, real instrument game modes, and support for over 2,000 songs. Rated T for Team. That boy they killed is my brother. When it comes to revenge... I hope you kill them all! The one who lives is the one who's faster. I created my own hell. And I'm the demon who crawled up out of it. Faster. Rated R. Starts November 24th. How'd they get here? How should I know? T-Rex and Truex? I don't think so. I may not know how to travel back in time, but my crew knows what to do. When I want to fly, crank around the wedge in the left rear. You're only turning 9,000, need another gear. Never know how. Never know how. Kate. Break it up, ladies. Bieber. The battle is on. The fans decide. The American Music Awards, live Sunday, November 21st. On ABC.
People who have been diagnosed with mesothelioma have many questions. How did I get this disease? What are my treatment options? How will this affect my loved ones? You need answers, which is why we offer a free book written by medical professionals who have treated mesothelioma. Call toll-free 1-888-888-3231 or go to freemesobook.com. There's no obligation, so call toll-free at 1-888-888-3231. Let AdamandEve.com add some spice into your routine. Go to AdamandEve.com and get 50% off just about every irresistible item when you enter offer code SEXY50. And for limited time, add even more spice with three bonus DVDs. Plus, get a free surprise gift so hot you'll just have to wait and see. And so you know we're not teasing. If you order right now, you'll get free shipping on your entire order. So go to AdamandEve.com and add some spice to your life. Sports Center, brought to you by Van Heusen at JCPenney. Vote for the Pro Football Hall of Fame at jcp.com slash fans choice. With two races remaining until the champion is crowned, Denny Hamlin takes a sprint cup lead of Phoenix Sunday, 3 Eastern ESPN. Coverage begins 2 Eastern with NASCAR countdown. Rusty Wallace, how will Jimmy Johnson respond to being the chaser instead of the chase E? We're used to seeing the Jimmy Johnson that's always leading the point standings. Now that he's 33 points behind, I think we're going to see a tiger. I think this guy's going to come out and attack big time. Look, we're going to go to Phoenix, Arizona, and that's a track where he's won at four times out of the last six tries. So he's very, very fast right there. And going into Homestead, Florida, he really never had a run real hard. He's always protected his position. Now he can stand in the throttle and get it done. I think we're going to see a 48 team and a 48 driver of Jimmy Johnson flat get it on the next two races. Denny Hamlin sits in the points lead, two races left. The chase leader with two races to go has never failed to win the championship. For Jimmy Johnson, Phoenix is his best track statistically. His 4.9 career average finish at the track ranks the best of all time. That's nearly a fifth place average finish. Tune in to 3 Eastern ESPN. The hanging Chad in South Florida most recently has been Chad Pennington. And Wednesday, he got the vote of his head coach. And this Sunday, he will start when the Dolphins host the Titans. Pennington replacing Chad Henney. It'll be Pennington's first start since week three of last season. The NFL saying there is no conclusive evidence that LaRon McClain spit in the face of Channing Crowder in last weekend's Dolphins-Ravens game. Crowder said McClain did it. McClain said he did spit, but it was an accident. Uh, former Brown Braylon Edwards, with no love for Cleveland fans, as his new team gets ready to visit his old team, says uh, uh, says now how he wanted to do a celebratory dance the day he got traded to the Jets, 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 Jets. So maybe public enemy number two, maybe behind only LeBron in Cleveland. Edwards tweeted, "All you Cleveland Browns fans, 17 is coming back, and you better bring your darn popcorn. Not that original with no. the popcorn thing. So it'll be up to Browns, Browns defensive coordinator Rob Ryan to keep 